everybody, and welcome to a new exciting episode of yeah! the Min Max Show podcast, place about games, friends, getting better. My name is Ben Hansen. Thank you for being here. I am joined in the flesh yes! in the new Min Max studio. If you're an audio listener, Real you can check here. it out on YouTube. We got flesh. We got bones. We got blood. We have thoughts on games. I'm Ben Hansen. I'm joined by Jeff Marchiafava. That's me. Joined by Kyle Hilliard. <laughs> Look what we did, Ben. Hey, look what we <laughs> did. That's right. And thank you, Leo Vader, for being here. Thank you. This is an honor of MinMax's fifth anniversary. We're only using the studio once, and then we're going to tear yeah. it down immediately. And you have to move again. That's right. That's the way it works. Uh, we have hit five years here at MinMax. Uh, time has flown. It's been a blast. Uh, we wouldn't exist without everybody watching, listening, sharing, talking about the show online given a recommendation on Reddit or et cetera. We greatly appreciate that. Everybody supporting us on Patreon. We literally would not be here without you. Um, but we are here in the new studio space. You know, I moved into my house a couple months ago. This was a very unfinished basement at that point. And so it's been a long haul to get it up to this point. But huge shout out to my daddy, uh, who has <laughs> done more work down here than you could possibly imagine. Daddy Don? Oh. Is that what you call him? Daddy Don, I insist, and he insists on being called that. I want to shout out my daddy, too. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like if I don't, it'll... <laughs> He might be jealous. Yeah, Technically, all of our daddies, none of us would be here right now. That's uh, true. And we're all like, oh, a company made it five years. Our daddies have made it a lot of years. It's facts. Fact. Uh, but also my brother-in-law, uh, he helped out in a huge way. We have this metal sign. This is a real thing. Back there, the MinMax logo uh, created by a friend of the show, Dave Clapp. Who, if you've been around for a long time, you probably recall him popping in on Game Informer and MinMax content. So huge shout out to Gabe, uh, Dave Clapp for uh, making that whole thing possible. Um, if you want a behind-the-scenes tour, of the new studio space, by the way, which is still a basement. You know, we we tried to get out of here, but it kept pulling us back down. But if you want to tour, uh, people at the backstage past here, we'll be sharing a link to a full tour of this space if you want to see exactly what's going on. Along with Kyle and Jeffem's first reactions. That's right. That's true. And I know people give Jeffem crap for not reacting enough, like when Xbox has some new uh, trailer they're revealing, mm -hmm. but if you want to see him react, house reactions. That's what <laughs> Jeff Hum really pops for in a huge way. The house hunter himself. That's, That's right. <laughs> you uh, did it. You found one. Oh, you God. hunted it. Okay. On this episode of the podcast, we have a lot to get to. And then back half of the show, community questions, a lot of great stuff in there. And there's a lot of questions that are a little more navel gazy, a little bit about five years of min-max, all that stuff. But there's some fun video game questions in there too. So hopefully we can please every entity absorbing this content out there. I like how you, you always feel like you have to like apologize like people are tuning into min max and it's like don't worry we won't talk about min max no, nothing it's just video games we promise i think if this entire show was just like we did it you guys it would if i was like a new listener i'd be like jesus christ so i'm always trying to keep the new fresh listeners in mind yeah. especially because it's a landmark episode it might be a more appealing place to jump in yes so we might yeah. be talking to more new listeners than usual yeah. right now and they might be hearing me say this as we speak this is the and next they're best welcome. entry point getting very series. close to shutting it off but don't shut it off yet we have so much going on here we have a big conversation about batman arkham shadows finally that wild Bat is getting out of these shadows. We're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about linked. Not just any linked. We're huh? talking linked. In. <laughs> That's right. LinkedIn, our new sponsor at yeah. Five Year Mark. Uh, linked Banner of the Spark. Yes. Uh, you don't know the name? We'll talk about it. We'll explain why it's interesting. Uh, UFO 50, of course, we're going to be talking a little bit about that. Uh, Kanitsugami, Path of the Goddess. Going to circle back to that one. Fear the Spotlight. If you're in the spooky mood... Get ready to get spooked out, dude, because we're going to be talking more about Fear of the Spotlight and a ton of other stuff, and then back half the show, of course, some great community questions, all that fun stuff. If you want to help support uh, Independent Games Media, there's Patreon. We get that. If you'd like a free option and a free option that'll net you a sweet prize, potentially, um, we have codes for Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster to give away if you want to get more in the Halloween spirit. If you follow at Show on Instagram before the end of this Friday... Follow MinMax Show on Instagram before the end of this Friday and leave a comment on a Dead Rising picture on there with your console of choice. We'll randomize it. We have Steam and PlayStation codes, I guess, between those two. We have Steam and PlayStation codes for Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster. We'll be randomly giving them away. So give us a follow on Instagram. Leave a comment on there and you can pretty easily win a code for Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster, everybody. Kyle? Yes, that's me. How does it feel to be podcasting in person, man? Good. I had to drive here. <laughs> <laughs> had to. I had to. Got to. Uh, got to. No, it's got cool. To. I, I genuinely am very impressed by the, the space. Yeah, me too. I was joking when I said, look what we did, because I did literally nothing to help 
set this up, but I think it looks fantastic. I you know what it. you did? No one gave me crap about it upon seeing it, which is nice, but then also no one's like, when's that studio? So, like, even in the community, no one's like, clock's ticking, bro, Seth, <laughs> which I greatly appreciate it because it's been a mad scramble with a baby up and around to also try and finish this off and stay on top of all other things. So I appreciate everybody's patience. But now that. we got the baby running the boards back there. That's it's right. Great. Come on, baby, crank up my So call. many knobs and dials to turn. <laughs> He's going to lose his mind if he ever sees yeah. that. <laughs> like, I need to get that mixer off the floor. Yeah. Uh, but, no, I was very excited for this episode for a lot of reasons. One of them is just seeing... Batman Arkham Shadows. <laughs> Since that game was first revealed, it was like, I cannot wait to play that thing and talk about it because it's going to be a fascinating game no matter how it lands. And this is the new Arkham game that is exclusive to the MetaQuest 3. And Kyle, mm -hmm. you have been playing it? Yeah, I've been playing it. And uh, I, I quite like it. Uh, <laughs> you say that as if like uh, you're taking a sip of wine. Yeah, no, it's... <laughs> I was I was sort of scared of it because like it, I've I've learned about myself with VR that I actually don't really like action games. I like right. rhythm games a lot, but I don't like throwing my fist or like or well, swinging a sword. But I think this game sort of zooms out a little bit and like scales down the complexity in like a way that that works really well because there's so many like f punching games where I feel like I run into a fight and I just kind of like sort of aimlessly flail and it doesn't feel it's good. It's the Vader immortal thing of like yeah. the way you win every fight is just like Vader. Just duck -a -duck -a -duck -a, just yeah. like swing your lightsaber around a little it bit. It would work. <laughs> it would. <laughs> That's a good point. But here it's like very much like it, it, there's it, it is it's it's more it's not a rhythm game but there are like quick time events but it like works in VR for me. Like it's like you have to do this punch you have to do this and then I love that the counter is you just hold your hand up right and then when you counter off screen there's just an alert and you just hold your hand up like this and often it becomes this thing where you're actually better off just standing there as Batman and waiting and just like standing and just like throwing your hands up in the air. <laughs> like rather than like turning to try to find somebody, it's better to right. just look straight ahead and like block because incoming punches. Because you basically punches. just stiff arm the air next to you yeah. when you need to counter and then it auto turns you to that guy. So it's like stiff arm, now I'm facing you, kadoosh, 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 and then knock him out. And yeah. that's it. And that it, sounds so, fun. So the combat it is fun. The combat this is, the, is This good. is the twist. Yeah. yeah. Like it's because it's, <laughs> I was just so scared of it being like that it was just going to be the equivalent of like pressing a a bunch and it's and it's not it's Jeff, are you alive? Sorry, no, no. <laughs> uh, but then I mean the Arkham of it all works too like yeah. the stealth stuff is solid like it's fun to VR you know go up to a gargoyle and then hang upside down and grab someone and pull them up like they all have the they're like I said they're basically quick time events where it's like now pull your hands up to lift this guy up in the air and it all feels good and it's like it's especially nice after really trying so hard with Suicide Squad. Right. Like, which is like a we game that did. I beat. And I was just like, I this sucks. Like, I, I'm so bummed out by this. To get a pro what I, I think it's fair to call it a proper Arkham game that feels good yeah. is yeah. is exciting. Like, yeah. the only, the, 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 the hang-ups are the same things that sort of are with every VR game where it's like, I do get a little bit of a headache playing too long. Yep. It's, it's hard to play for extended periods of time, but like the core game feels like Arkham in a way that I'm really impressed by. I, it sounds like the yeah. auto turning would make you motion sick. Right? So yes, that's, that's an option. So it's wild. So I played, uh, maybe like an hour and a half of this game and I get nauseated super easily and it's, it kind of bummed me out. Cause like, I'm looking forward to this game. I think it's a fascinating game just as a game design puzzle of how do you take the entire Arkham formula and make it work in VR. Like, I know Rocksteady did their kind of little tech demo as Batman. Yeah. That's that's cute, but that's walking around and pulling a bookshelf and opening a <laughs> secret door. This is like trying to be a full Arkham game. I think that alone, you could you could write a book just about the design problems I'm sure they had to go through with this thing. Um, but booting it up, I did have that moment of like, oh, that's right, VR. Okay, I look like such <laughs> I mean, a yeah. jackass. Yeah. And at the same, same time, you boot it up, and then it's like, here's a wall of options that you can tweak and it's just, there's something sort of pressing about jumping into a game and just like, okay, you're going to be physically ill, but if you dial all these little things in, this is why I kind of missed it the remote recording. To, yeah, right? I, yeah. I got to go yeah. pick up my kid. Are okay. we done? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, but just having to dial the stuff in, it's like dialing complex PC settings, but if you get one setting off, you might puke. <laughs> you know, right. It's just like a weird, if you could not sneeze, it, we're recording in person. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> 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 so it does a lot of like, there's no, as far as I could tell, teleport to walk, at least the setting that I had, which is kind of like the middle 
I just went default. Difficulty. I was kind of intimidated yeah. by that big list. I was like, ah, I'll play and see where I want to tweak things. Uh -huh. So it, it works well for me where like if you're moving, it'll do the tunnel thing of kind of mm -hmm. like dark in a circle. And I think even if you're turning, it'll do the tunnel thing as well. Right. Um, so yeah. it seems to know that... In, by and large, um, I was feeling okay. After yeah. like an hour and a half, I started getting a little hot under the collar. And I'm like, all right, I need to cool it on this thing. Um, I might puke at any hot moment. Hot under the cowl. <laughs> there we go. We can't miss, miss joke opportunity. Right. Please. They'll, Not they'll in kill this us. space. Yeah. <laughs> We'd be eating crow or rather eating bat. Ooh. Oh, the chicken Don't. of the cave? Scarecrow. <laughs> So anyways, um, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> How do they avoid the... I'm so sorry. I destroyed that entire conversation. How do they avoid the wiggle meta? Is it just people go down in one hit? Or there's a limit on how fast you can hit them? So, like, if you hold... You, you do, like, a quick punch to zip to somebody. Mm -hmm. And then it literally is, like... It gives you an icon on screen that you have to do. So, like, maybe you have to do a left hook or you punch straight ahead. Yep. And if you do that wrong, it, the you you miss. Right. Gotcha. It's like a fight. So it's like you you literally I, I I don't think you literally can't swing wildly. Like it won't you it can, won't work. You, when you like can do a move of like pinning an enemy on the ground, then there's sometimes right. like a count bang down. on the Donkey Kong Congas. Just <laughs> like yeah. the crap out of him when he's on the ground. But it's like it's a very clear. It's like now is the time to do this. There's like there's like literally a four three two one countdown. Yeah, um, that's smart. Yeah. It's, it is smart. It's, yeah, it, it, to be, have it be so specific and like this is the exact action you have to do makes it feel closer to something like like a, a rhythm game in VR, which I, I really like. But you're right, I think the biggest thing is just like, I think it's art direction. It's a lot of things like, yeah. oh, this this feels so Arkham. And it's so nice, especially in the year with Suicide Squad, not to tear one thing down, to lift up another, but it's like, it's just so nice to have a new game that's like, yes, different medium. I understand VR is going to be a turnoff for a lot of people, but still at the same time, it's like, it has the Arkham vibe and like yeah. Arkham storytelling and it has a confident level of storytelling. Like I'm intrigued by it just being a solid Batman story. I'm I'm into it, man. And I mean, yeah, and the main stuff, which is like the combat, the stealth mode, and then mm -hmm. like detective mode are all like well implemented. Like it's simple, but like holding your your head your hand up to your your face and then like turning on detective mode that's feels that, good. That's, that's why I'm so excited to uh, touch Leo here is <laughs> because to go into there. detective mode you just go bloop, with like a finger and like yeah. tap on the side of the ears bloop, then it really goes into detective mode. And you can also excellent. glide too by like literally holding out your arms which <laughs> it's, is it's really dumb, funny because like alright you gotta cross this gap it's like okay hold the triggers and then go yeah. and then you can kind of like feather it. Yeah. It's like cool. <laughs> it's still it works man. It's fun and dorky fun, to like yeah. grab the batarang like off your chest and chuck that out and then it comes back to you even just the dorky thing of i'm not a a very muscular man but having the batman arms and looking down at like these huge <laughs> yeah, just yeah. pieces of timber for your arms like this is kind of cool they, man they make sure that when you walk in front of a shadow you get the silhouette you know or yeah. walk in front of the light i mean which is which is nice and then yeah. with the the grips you can also make an easy thumbs up so you can give a shadow <laughs> like yeah i'm batman yeah, there's, man there's a lot there was a cut scene with harvey dent and like gordon talking to me for it was a pretty long cut scene it was like three or four minutes and it was a lot of me being like yeah hey, and like <laughs> walking up to gordon and getting like really close to his face and just like just like not being batman at all like not <laughs> not role playing where i'm just sort of like awkwardly looking around and fiddling with stuff on the desk they need to give you like a notebook to be taking notes in or something yeah. immersive to be fiddling with so you don't end up doing that it is it is also funny to start i don't know if you ran into this too bad where it's like yeah i'm batman but it was a lot of me being like all right wait hold on i gotta like where's my batarang okay yeah it's like right here which is smoke like, bombs are somewhere yeah. around here <laughs> and then and then when things do go awry in the stealth mode i did find myself kind of be like oh <laughs> you know, <it's> just, <laughs> gargoyle <laughs> let me just catch my breath yeah. it's also that animation that if you've played any arkham game you've seen it like dozens of times is where he like pulls the grate off and like slides it over mm -hmm. i'm so familiar with that animation now yeah. and it's 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 silly but it's like it's nice to be like yeah i'm pulling it off and sliding it over you know they, they specifically have a whole routine you have to do for that which is nice yeah so the game uh takes place between origins and of course right. origins blackgate we don't forget about you uh 3ds vita steam game i do um jeff I remember when we do. streamed that <laughs> that was a new show plus of going back to play that do you have any defining memories of that it was a real mess i remember us playing it and you being like you repeatedly dying in combat and being no, like this so. cannot be <laughs> like this like we're missing a core thing of how this is supposed to work, mm -hmm. and we never we never learned what it was. I remember being distracted while playing, trying to uh, combat the foes in Blackgate because you kept talking about Catwoman and leather. This guy wouldn't stop. 
That's, uh-huh. That sounds like Joe. <laughs> there, there was something in that where you're <laughs> talking about how the cat woman you were as a kid. Freak. All right. You freak with your oh, sexual Michelle, preferences. Michelle Pfeiffer in a latex <laughs> cat suit. Yeah, I'm a uh, freak. Okay, okay yeah. I was, I was the um, only one. <laughs> so the point is it takes place before Arkham Asylum, but it is trying to be in that Arkham game. I'm yeah. sure Rocksteady would roll in their graves with the idea of like, ah, they they hated the idea of Arkham Origins being considered canon, but now it's like, now there's a whole VR game that also is out of your control, but also yeah. squeezing in there that's trying to be canon with this universe. It 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 has quickly, I I probably, you said what, you played like an hour or two, something like yeah, that? Yeah, I probably like three hours in. I played in like two or three sessions, I think, and I want to play more. Like, I want to finish it, I do. Yeah. And I think it has already become one of the, like, if someone's like, hey, I'm kind of looking at that quest headset. I'm right. always like, Beat Saber, Resident Evil 4... And I think mm. I would throw Batman in there now as well, honestly. Cool. Of just yeah. like get these, you know. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. I mean, I haven't um, played Half Life Alex. Um, yeah. I guess I could on my Meta Quest through some. That's how I played it. Crazy yeah. shenanigans. Which yada, is like yada, yada, that, yada. that also is a, on that list of recommendations, but yeah. it has that asterisk of like, but you need a high end PC. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. Whereas this thing, yeah, it's exclusive to the Quest Three and the Quest Three S, which they announced not too long ago and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, it does feel like okay, this is a big meaty game and we haven't mentioned it's from um, Camouflage who I'm a big fan of they had a great uh, developer podcast running for many years which really will connect you with a (laughs) a developer when they put that much effort into a podcast Um, but they made Republic if you remember like a decade ago at this point like hey high end iOS game and then eventually they came to Steam and all this stuff I backed that on Kickstarter did you play it? no yeah (laughs) it was like right when Kickstarter started being a thing and it was just exciting the idea of backing something Mm -hmm. on Kickstarter yeah and so that was Going for, I eventually ended up really liking that game. Like it, it, uh, so Ryan Payton, who's the founder of the studio, he was the associate producer on Metal Gear Solid 4. He also, I mean, he was there since I think it was Subsistence, I think is when he started. So he had a lot of stealth experience there. And then Repo Bleak, it worked as like an homage to Metal Gear, but I really liked it as a stealth game there. And then they made Iron Man VR. Mm-hmm. Uh, not too long ago. We interviewed them on our channel where they also talked about how they had a pitch for what would have been the first Battle Royale, but then the publisher didn't pick it up. <laughs> but it was like oh, basically right. in like 2016 or something, they're like, uh, what about a Battle Royale style game? And everyone's like, nah, nah that'll never catch on. Like um, before PUBG? Yeah, oh. yeah. Um, all right. But anyways, uh, yeah, they made Iron Man VR and all that stuff. And now this does feel like I had moments of like, oh, this this feels kind of like Republic in VR, which I know they mm-hmm. also did VR mode for that. But just kind of getting back to like the stealth stuff and just having the predator rooms you're kind of hovering above as you're slowly taking people out it's cool to see them kind of reconnect to that and if you remember we talked about it in our interview a little bit but it's a fascinating studio for a lot of reasons but one of them is like uh ryan payton founded the studio after he left 343 because he was the original creative director for halo 4 that's why he left konami and kojima productions was to go to that right right and then he he's talked about it a little bit of like he was getting a little too artsy fartsy the kind of the the log line was, okay, what if Halo took some more lessons from Eco, like that type of thing, and they're like, who knows how that all went down, yeah. but then eventually they go off and found your own thing. And I mean, so, I love Eco. Eco's a masterpiece. Right. But I don't know if there's a Venn diagram with Halo. I don't think it was exactly <laughs> that bit, but you get the idea. But no, it's just cool to see them uh, release a game. It's like, oh, it's a real Arkham game in VR. Yeah. And my God, it's just, it's nice checking in on VR every once in a while and just being reminded that like, oh, these developers have been beating their head against a wall for like seven years now trying to solve all of these design issues now just to jump in and be like how are you guys doing on uh, getting sick like okay pretty good overall like not not bad here folks I will say in the same way that I don't uh, I, I think I've explained that I like the combat here but I generally I don't want to be punching in VR mm-hmm. or sword slashing one thing that Arkham does that I'm like I don't want to do this in VR anymore I'm done with this is climbing ladders Right. Like, I just, I don't want to climb ladders in VR. I don't want to climb. Maybe it was the Horizon PSVR 2 game that just, like, totally burned me out on that because I, like, ripped through that game to review it. But I, like, I don't want to do this action in VR anymore. It's not fun. (laughs) Just give me a ramp or something. Have you played The Climb? Yeah, I reviewed it. I didn't like it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, you, but you also you have the hook shot thing, so you can bypass yes. a lot of ladders. So you don't you don't have to climb too many ladders. Which but, is nice. Yeah. yeah. I uh one critique. The combat. Maybe it's just I if I had better headphones on or something, it'd sound different, but like the defining part of that combat in a big way, I think, for the Arkham games is like the crack of the bat, no pun intended, every time you're punching for this. <laughs> like it is just like wham, bam, bam, and I feel like it's a little Little light. I mm. want it to feel like huge impact, but maybe it's just the Crack. fact that I'm actually punching the air. Yeah, Except for yeah. one time, um, 
there's a nice pass through thing with the quest three so it normally lets you know when you're getting close to stuff but uh, it did not let me know when i just full-on punched my tv as hard as i could <laughs> oh, no. just like to the point that the, my rest of my gaming session my hand hurt because i well, cause punched my tv they want you to take the tv out so you can only play vr Smart. games so they don't give you a heads up when you're about yeah. to intrude on that I, I went to the doctor because of pistol whip and i had i like pulled <laughs> i pulled a little tendon in my doctor i've been well, pistol whipped in yeah, vr right. <laughs> and he was like uh okay great i don't know what that means but no i, I did have to put like a little just splint on my finger for a couple days because oh, i dang. punched the crap out of a wall playing pistol <laughs> you know what, actually now i think about it, maybe that's why i don't want to just punch uh at, at the air anymore it just turned me off from that what do you think about uh the story so far as a batman kind of sewer such as yourself um there are things that i it's not like it, it, um instantly pulling me in like whoa this is this is crazy but there's yeah. stuff i like i like that you Gosh, is it a spoiler to talk about the first like three minutes, three or four minutes of the game? Maybe no. I think you 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 start as like an uh, an enemy, right? Basically, which the group is cool. called the rats, who are right. kind of like it's the it's very coded for like, hey, these are these people in society have no other path. They're typically the poorer end of the spectrum here, and yeah. now they're rising up to try and overthrow everybody. And it, it even in the early hour ish, it is already tying into a lot of interesting things of just kind of the rat king's kind of the big bad, and there's a lot of lines from him about like yeah, you're like oh Batman, um. The price of your suit could have paid for housing for all of the rats. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. We're going for it out of the gate here. And I did. I met Barbara in person, and I liked the dynamic of like it's a young Barbara who's not Oracle yet. Yeah. And Batman being like, "What are you? Get out of here! Like, what? <laughs> you, I don't want to talk to you. Like, don't be involved in this. You're gonna get yourself killed." And right. I kind of like that dynamic of those two. Like, because Barbara's like a really talented hacker who is finding information that Batman hasn't found yet. Like, yeah. he got one call where she's like, hey, you need to look at this guy. And Batman's like, stop calling me. And he's like, Alfred, can you uh, look into that guy for me? <laughs> and I like I like that dynamic. I hope there's more of that stuff. Right. Of her, of him being sort of dad to Barbara, quote unquote, so, so to speak. But um, but not, other than that, like, there's nothing, there's no, like, early hook that I'm like, ooh, what, what, what are we going to see? How is this going to end up? You know? I think the Rat King is, is an like interesting him. villain. I yeah. like that idea of, of what they're working with out of the gate here. Yeah. I know that Scarecrow is going to be in it. Apparently, Elijah Wood is playing Scarecrow, but I haven't Actually, encountered I know him that. yet. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's wild. Um, yeah, it's, it's like, hey, this seems much more well done than the internet was expecting. There's so much negativity in the game is revealed. It's like, what? Is it? It's not like these developers would have been making a Arkham game for the console like this is facebook paying for this thing like yeah. i'd rather have it as a weird batman experiment than not and to know they're like hey looks like they landed it that's yeah. awesome some of the t negative reaction might be because people don't get to have it yes it's exclusive yeah. to one 800 yes. dollars yeah. device that nobody has and on the on the most dour end of things it's also a matter of like well i think this game is vr's last big shot i mean what else <sighs> could there possibly be and like Asgard's they're wrath three Okay, sure. They're, I need to play Asgard's Wrath 2. I won't scoff. At the same time, like they're bundling this in with the headset. It seems like this is probably Meta's last big push yeah. for a big game. And it has me really scared for the future of Camouflage. Even they're like, hey, they did it. But hey, Ready at Dawn was cranking out good VR games as well. Yeah. And then they got snuffed out. Um, I feel like we didn't talk about that studio going down enough. Like That was, that was a really sad day in the industry. Yeah. Um, and so it's still, it's such a terrible spot for vr to be like hey way to go but then just this feeling in the back of my mind a, a shadow of just like an arkham shadow i have no faith in facebook funding this studio for the future and it's yeah. a heartbreaker i mean it, it would take a lot of people adopting the quest hardware and this right? is like, like the last that, chance if that yeah. bundle sells a lot then it's like good we're, we'll get an arkham right. two maybe i have no idea but right yeah i guess that'd not be that i necessarily chance. like want that i you know i want camouflage to do whatever they want but you know kyle would you recommend people buy a quest three to play batman arkham shadows if they're a big uh, arkham fan here i mean it's it's always a tough recommendation I, I because i did think about that it's like is this worth the price of admission right like is right. this the game to get and like I don't I don't know that it is, but like no. if you haven't touched VR at this point, to get the bundle with Batman and then also check out Pistol Whip and Beat Saber and uh, you know those types of good games that are on Quest, like I I think there is a library there that's worth adopting now, but I don't know if like if all you're going to play is Batman, I don't know if that's like yeah, you got to get it just to play Batman, right. don't worry about anything else. Here's know? here's what you can do. Here's my biggest recommendation. If you love Arkham and a lot of people listening and watching probably do, you're curious about VR, you got like four or five gamer friends also in that same <laughs> vein. 
split the costs, rotate it around. You're going to get sick of VR in a couple months. Just keep that swapping between houses. Like, you could get it for pretty cheap. Is, is that a wild thing? No. Do you know how much Batman is, like, on its own? Like, just the software? Is it a $60 VR game? How much is Arkham Shadow? Because I think fi- beat 50 bucks. 50 bucks. Okay, yeah. That's significant. I mean, that's that's yeah. a lot. Beat Saber is like 20 bucks. Right. You know? mm-hmm. um, yeah. But I still think, I, I'm excited to see just a game that isn't just, hey, Beat Saber. It's, yeah. it's no, an awesome Absolutely. game, to be fair, you yeah. know, but just to have some big, meaty things. And it feels like if we have Half-Life Alex, this Horizon? I don't know. What, what are like the big, me- Asgard's Wrath? Yeah. What are the, what are the big meatball sandwiches oh, in VR gaming? Resident Evil 4. 4. Yep. Yeah. Yep, that's true. A couple different versions of it at this point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But. Did you see those um, Meadows Orion glasses? Uh, no. Are th- is that, I think maybe, is that um, augmented reality, like yeah. AR stuff? The nice thing is you don't need to look it up because you're wearing them right now. They, oh, they look oh. honestly very close to that. Really? <laughs> Imagine a thicker version of your glasses and then they're not selling them yet, but it has like augmented reality in there. So it's not like a pass-through headset yeah. thing. And it's the thing of like them just getting out there and be like, this is the future. Is these thick ass glasses, uh, and you can like project AR stuff. We're not selling them yet. It's not really yeah. a good price, but you know, like five years from now, this is gonna be sweet. I, I, I love that. I, I love the idea of it of just like having heads up display stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, would it be, or would it be infuriating or nice to like always just have the time displayed? When my, because I wear glasses all the time. So if I got until these, you die, yeah, yeah countdown, <laughs> <Cut> yeah. <out. laughs> but like maybe that would just drive me crazy, and I would be like, no, you know what? Actually, I hate this. Like I don't want data all the time. But yeah, you've got to watch. It seems huh? cool. That is true, but I don't have to look at it. I'm not looking at it right now. Right? Yeah. Can you tell? I feel yeah, like <laughs> I'm comfortable waiting for that tech. Just put it in my car windshield when it's ready. That's don't. I have literally my car has that. What are you talking about? My my Mazda, yeah, it has it has the miles per hour projected on the uh, on the windshield, and it's great, and I love it. Well, that's solid. Uh, I'm, I'm talking <laughs> about like, give me uh, directions. Like, oh, I want yeah. like We're a waypoint on the road, there. Forza Horizon style. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's red when you got to slow down and actually show me on um, the road. It does do some stuff because it gives me the miles per hour, and it does give me alerts if there's a car. Like, if I'm trying to turn left, it, it'll like flash up on the on the windshield. Wow. Yeah. God, cool. This is the Mazda 2034 model? That's right. I'm from the future. Wow, <laughs> the should. Mazda Batmobile. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I gotta say, it's it's nice when you feel that thrill of just like, God, I keep forgetting how much fandom I have in my heart for this, but like, <laughs> the opening space, when you first play as Batman in this yeah. game, you're standing right next to like the Bat Boat. It's like, yeah. God, I just <laughs> like seeing that thing to walk and seeing around it in it. VR, like it makes me surprisingly happy. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. I, I would like to finish it. I want to keep playing it. It is. It's tough for me to play VR. Be, I mean, maybe this is for everybody, but it's like I have to like alert my family and find time to be like. By the way, I'm going to be in the basement in that uh, one open space of the house uh, with a VR headset on, so I probably won't hear you if you call for me or text me. Right. So, like, Don't approach I have... me because I might <laughs> bat punch you. Uh, the cats are not allowed to rub up against my leg um, unless you're Jeff. Them. It's his wildest dream with that leather. <laughs> It was latex. How many times are you gonna get that right? Right, right. But uh, but I do I do want to make time for it. I mean, and I feel like that's a high compliment to be like I'm gonna make time to play VR mm-hmm. stuff, you know, rather than just dabble, which is what I usually do. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, there we go, Batman Arkham Shadow. Curious to hear other people's thoughts. Um, that's crazy because the way you are with Batman is kind of like the way I am with Linked Banner of the Spark. <laughs> oh. You know what that reminds me of, Leo? <laughs> is me undies. Oh, okay. <laughs> Worth the shot. <laughs> you were right there. Uh, me undies, everybody. Uh, thank you to me undies for uh, supporting us uh, and supporting this episode of the podcast. Here's the thing: uh, Sarah Pajorski has turned us all into fashionistas here at MinMax, and so I started caring about the clothes I wear for the first time in my life. You know, as you can tell from her making shirt. me buy this. Fancy really, boys. thank you. Um, but I did have a revelation of just I don't really care about my underwear. I've never really thought about getting new underwear, and then me undies comes along and said. Pick out a pair of underwear. Go ahead. It's on us. I said, well, I'm a little sheepish. This goes by by neither regions, but sure. <laughs> and clicked on, I got like a nice purple pair of Ursula underwear. Wow. Now, genuinely, whenever I open my underwear drawer, folks at home, when I open my underwear drawer, if I'm picking anything other than the Ursula underwear, I feel like yuck. This is bad. <laughs> this is bad underwear. Every time I wear that, it's wow. like, this genuinely makes me feel different throughout the day. I've never valued underwear until MeUndies came along. Swear to God! Yeah. I hope I get pants today. <laughs> so yeah, you're saying exactly. when you're not wearing MeUndies, 
you're a real poor, unfortunate soul. That's exactly what I'm trying to communicate. Uh, That's exactly right. Uh, so MeUndies, everybody, they got <laughs> style for everyone. MeUndies <laughs> no. has a cut for every guy's butt. Good. I wasn't expecting to be vulgar on this episode. Jesus Over Christ. ten different styles, ranging from boxer briefs to jock straps to our special pouch underwear called Ball Caddy. Okay. Oh my God. Uh, Did Jeff okay. write this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is something. It's unmatched comfort, responsibly sourced, problem-free philosophy. Wrong Disney film. MeUndies. I don't know what you're trying to go for here. Uh, they say, not happy with your first pair of undies? It's on MeUndies. I'm extremely happy with my first pair of MeUndies. I now want MeUndies for every article of my clothing. I want MeUndies hats. I want a MeUndies car. Um, so, <laughs> you can be your most comfortable self this fall with MeUndies. Get 20% off your first order plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash MinMax. That's MeUndies.com slash MinMax for 20% off plus free shipping. MeUndies. Comfort from the outside in. Ooh. That's blank. You just came up with that. <laughs> That's wow. right. Wow. Came up with it just like some fine developers in LA and around the world came up with a game called Linked, colon, colon, blank, blank, Banner of the Spark, Leo Vader. <laughs> We've been playing this damn thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. High level. Linked Banner of the Spark. Um, the pitch was, I believe it was pitched like in 2020 as, uh, hey, Animal Crossing and Hades. <laughs> Fuse those two together. <laughs> what if it's an action RPG where you're building up a town uh, in your in your hub world there? And we had an interview on MinMax's channel uh, about this recently. The name of the studio is FuzzyBot, and uh, it was co-founded by Max Spielberg, the son of Steven Spielberg. This is the first time he you know he worked on. I mean, going back to DreamWorks Interactive, uh, and then early EA days he was there. But then also he worked on Assassin's Creed. He worked on Battlefield for a long time. This is his first time. Max Spielberg, Jeff. Um, That's right. The son of Steven Spielberg. This is the first time he's a creative director on a project here. And the other thing that's making this game interesting, there's a lot of things, is that this is the first game that is published by Dreamhaven. So Mike Morheim, the co-founder of Blizzard, they, stay with me, Leo, they split off, made their own thing, Dreamhaven. They're working on their own stuff there. But then they said, you know what? We'll get into game publishing. What's going to be our first game we're publishing? And it's a linked banner, banner of, of the, the spark. spark. Everybody, uh, Leo, what do you think of Linked, the Banner of the Spark? <laughs> it's pretty good. I, I, I'm with you. It's cute. I I think if I had a ding against it, it's that it's pretty built for co-op, uh, and yeah. playing it single player, you feel like you're having a bit of a lesser experience. You're supposed to be reviving each other, healing each other, and you don't really uh, get that. But it's fun combat. The main hook is the wire you use to pull in objects and small critters to grab them and throw them at other things. And you can upgrade that in different ways, throw it further, to have grab from further, whatever. And that's also like how you catch fish is by throwing the wire out. Oh, I didn't even do that yet. Of course. It's yeah. a pretty good feeling fish mini game yeah. as far as catching fish goes. I, I'm in that same camp of like, oh, I, I like this. It's like it's this type of game. It can overwhelm you easily and it's still in early access. So they're going to have a lot of room to improve. Hopefully remove those robot voices because those are rough. I, they're a little annoying and I went in the settings to check them out. The default is set to reduced robot voices. Oh, there's really? Oh, there's none and it oh, starts to reduce. Oh my God. <laughs> um, no, but it's like, this seems like a good uh, first step for an early access game. Um, and I'm, I'm bored. And like the on-ramp, I feel like is really delicate for this type of thing. Especially because it's like, okay, part kind of town builder, action RPG. There's a lot of systems they can overwhelm you with, but it's like, okay, it's a it's a smooth on-ramp, even in early access here, which I really appreciate it. So I'm having, I'm having a surprisingly good time with it. Like, the arenas that you're kind of launching out into, like, some of those are, like, surprisingly small, and the ones are a little bit bigger and stuff like that, but, Kyle, how are you feeling about Linked? Uh, I, Spark? The thing that struck me is, like, I, I think the animation is really good, and I think yeah. it feels good. Like, it does feel good to play, which is, like, make or break for the genre, I think. Well, for any action game, really. Um, I don't I don't love the art style. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I kind of wish, I don't know, maybe it's just the, like, old man in me or something. Goes like, I kind of want something a little darker. Like, I, it's just, like, too bubbly and happy. I don't know, which is yeah, weird, a weird thing to say. Happy but, stuff. Go yeah. Back to your Arkham Shadow, bro. <laughs> I guess, yeah. I've been playing so much Silent Hill and Arkham Shadow that it's like, what are these colors? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Yuck. Uh, um, tons of weapon types for early access. A lot of, like, weapons that play completely differently, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about just kind of the upgrade system, swapping out parts, all that fun stuff? You get your hooks into that? Yeah, it's coming a little slow. Maybe the the variety you're purchasing the different uh, perks to possibly see in your run and then get. So it is kind of nice that you can go straight at like this is my favorite weapon. I want to get everything for it and have runs built around it. 
But yeah, sometimes I come out of runs and I'm like, I didn't really get that much besides just the next tick, maybe the next building to put down in the home base, which right. is satisfying to do that layout and go visit everybody between runs. Yeah, it is. It is so dopey that even in the year of our Lord 2024, it's like, oh, this is giving me Dark Cloud vibes. I really love Dark Cloud on PS1 or sorry, PS2. And this feels a little bit like that, like slowly building out my little RPG town. I mean, you guys have used the term Animal Crossing. Like how, yeah. how Animal Crossing is it? Not so much. The no? town okay. building, but like. You know, I, I'm not falling in love with the lovable cast of characters back home yet. Mainly, it's just the thrill of building up that town. Okay. And I so, guess so also, it's not like you spend a ton of time just talking to people and getting stuff, right? It's you not kind like of do. There, there are quests and stuff, yeah. Okay. And and you get can talk to people once per day for a big friendship bonus, and they give you gifts at certain levels and stuff. Okay. But, and it's all... Is it all aesthetic, like the buildings you're making? Like, is because that's the big thing about Animal Crossing is it's like it's all sort of art direction on a player level, right? It's like, how do you want this thing to look? Is that what Linked is as well, or is it more like if you have this building, you're going to get bonuses? You just have to find a good place to put it. I don't know if it's like layout, you're getting bonuses uh, okay. for putting it one spot or the other. I think I think it's mainly aesthetic for layout, as far as I've seen. Yeah, there's cute decorations to put down and build a little park or whatever early on, and that's. Uh, you know, the characters come up and sit on it and interact with it, which okay. I like. But it's just you complete the quest for building three of these things. It's not like it gives a bonus to any kind of like health recovery or whatever when you're at your base. Okay, yeah. be cool. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, it seems like the combat's evolving. It's like, okay, I'm unlocking new moves. It's helping out a lot because starting out, it's like, this is pretty simple combat. I don't know about this, but okay, get new combos, new weapons. Like, I'm seeing where this is going to keep evolving as they keep adding to this thing. But it is, it's a weird spot for the state of the game industry. Because it's like, okay, it's a little dark cloud building up this town. I love it. I love it. I love it. And then as I was playing, I'm like, why am I scared of this game? <laughs> and I think what it is, is like, it feels like it has the model of it could be a free to play game with mm -hmm. like, hey, we got a couple different currencies. You're oh, building yeah. out That's this scary. town. Like it, it reminded me of playing Disney Dreamlight Valley, you know, and just mm. that feeling of like, I don't trust you. <laughs> but it's weird to go into like, you know, a game that's just on Steam. Like, it's not free to play, to be really clear, but still just being like, yeah, but that kind of soul sucking aspect of the industry has kind of claimed this genre of going yeah. out on little missions and building up a town. And it's not fair to this game to judge it on that because it's not doing that. But just, it's weird how that can kind of pollute my experience. And I'm constantly just on edge because of that. And, and like with the art style, like I was saying, it's kind of like a free to play art style, Maybe which is bad that that exists. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, it definitely is. Yeah. yeah. There's, did you guys ever play Castlevania on Apple Arcade? They're sort of somewhat recent. It was like very what? clearly a free to play game that had been like picked up by Apple to be published. So it doesn't have microtransactions and stuff, but it has that feeling of like, yes. this feels like it wants me to take out my wallet at any moment. And it, and it is totally bugging me and I don't want to play anymore, <laughs> right. even though it wasn't the case. Yeah. But it's uh, just on steam right now, linked banner, of the spark, but uh, yeah, off to, off to a good start. Good I'm combat. Like, I think it feels good like that. Yeah. I was impressed right away. I was like, Oh, this feels good. Like to, to do the, the roll and the sprint and stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. For definitely a lot of Hades inspiration there, yeah. which, uh, can't complain about that. Um, I did have a weird moment Leo, as I was playing this. I was like, God, this is such a satisfying loop. I love this so much. And I was like, wait, what else am I playing a lot on my Steam Deck? It's like, oh, it's just Pilot Quest from UFO 50. Mm. It's just the same loop as Pilot <laughs> Quest of building out your base, going on a little runs, getting resources, coming back. But it turns out that's pretty damn addictive in and of itself. We like that. And we like that. Jeff, um, is UFO 50 still your most played game by a freaking mile over the last uh, um, month? I, th I think I'm... Yes, it is. I think I'm coming up to 50 hours and I, I finally dusted off the last couple mm -hmm. games so I've, I have now at least played some of every single game okay and what's the ranking of all 50 <laughs> I I honestly like I don't know what my favorite game is yet because there were ones that I played and I'm I mean house party obviously everybody's gonna say house party but mm -hmm. there are ones that I played that I was like oh I love bug hunter already I've played like 20 minutes of it, but then I went on to other games and I keep being like, I want to go back and I want to play more Bug Hunter and some yeah. of these other games. And I just haven't like, it's an embarrassing amount of games to try and play through. And, and I wanted to finally get to the end. So I, I need to go back and play the ones that I really liked more in order to figure out like an an absolute ranking or does, something. Does like the that. gold and cherry stuff, is that pulling you along? Are you motivated by doing the gold, which is like the early finish and the cherry, which is the super hard finish? Yeah, a little. Like now now that I have I have at least dabbled in everything, there are ones that I got pretty close to beating and it's like, well, I could go back and do that 
and then I guess the frame will turn yellow, and that's kind of enough for me for me to just want to you know like go back and attempt another run at whatever. Yeah, um, for for looking at the big screen of all of them, having like the ratio that our gold get higher and higher, yeah. it's really satisfying. Yeah. yeah, we did. Um, there's a channel in the MinMax Discord where people are still talking about UFO 50 because God, it's so good. It's such a wild game. But like, w- there's a I jumped in there on a whim and said like, hey, do you think it'd be fun? Can we do like a ranking and try and lock something down? Because I would love just like a hive-minded, not just one person's take, but like a hive-minded take on like, these are the best games. And I jumped in that channel and dropped that bomb and then ran away. But are they doing <laughs> something like that, Leo? Is that yeah. The idea? I was like, yeah, we should do that. And then 10 minutes later, I was like, I'll do that. And then I made a <laughs> survey. So it's like you do a ranked order of all 50 games. It's pinned in that channel in the Discord right now. Please submit your vote before the end of the month. Can uh, we check out, can we look at results right now? Um, you might have to have my admin stuff, oh, which I don't have handy. Bother. Unless you want to fill it out and do it live, or have Jeff do it. Oh, because it'll show at the end of the thing. Yeah. Mm, okay, well, I'll get to that in a bit. Let check it out. <laughs> um, yeah. So, what are your go-to's, Leo, at this point? Um, I just got the cherry on Party House, which I was very proud of. <clears throat> uh, that's a hard one. You have to do five random runs in a row. Oh my god. And there's no guarantee that you get any of the like, stuff that like helps you win <laughs> in those random runs. So very satisfying to get that. Ooh. Okay. Oh, here we go. All Paint right. Chase, I've been grinding on. Kick Club, I've been grinding on. Paint Chase grind. I get it, man. Uh, Jeff, what do you think is the number one voted from the Midmax community so far for UFO 50? House Party. House Party is not. You think? House Party. Where is House Party? That's lower than I thought. Oh, Party, party House. Party House. Party that's house. the problem. Party House is second to the bottom? Can no, this... like, that's number two total. That's... <laughs> Oh, it's best to worst. <laughs> All right, that yeah. makes more sense. You're right, Jeff. Um, Party <laughs> House is number go. two. <laughs> number one, Warp Tank. That's a crowd pleaser. Yeah, I mm. love that's the one. Okay, yeah. where it's like yeah, attaches yeah. to the ceiling. Yeah, yeah, I love that one. That is one of those games. It's like if you if this was a Game Boy game, we would still be talking about yeah. it. It would yep. be an all time classic. Yep. yep, exactly. Then a Tactics, then Night Manor, then Grimstone, which is the big RPG, Pilot Quest, Mortal. That's pretty high for Mortal. Oh, no, Mortal. Never mind. I was thinking of the first game. Mortal's good. Uh, mm-hmm. Mooncat. That's really high. Camouflage. Speaking of Batman Arkham Shadow. Uh, Avianos. And at the bottom of the list right now, it's Combatants. Uh, and Planet Zoloth right above that. Uh, but that's awesome. Thanks, Leo, for putting that together. Absolutely. Yeah. Please vote. Do you guys think we're just going to be playing UFO 50 for like the rest of our lives? Is this? <laughs> we could. It's so we good. We could be. I, yeah, I was thinking like, man... Like this is a this is a once in a lifetime thing. I would love if they did a UFO fifty two. Oh my god! Or or like, but like do it do it as like a rival company and do like yeah. another fifty uh. games that were like the rival to UFO Soft. Even the lesser rival. Yeah, yep. And I I would love to play that, but it's like, I mean, I hope like I hope the game does really well and like makes them want to do another based on steam reviews it's doing okay yeah. it's not doing as amazing as it deserves to be doing yeah. yeah but it's but i can't imagine especially when it took them like seven years or whatever and it, it was longer than they than they clearly thought it was going to right like, i can't imagine they'd want to jump in and do another huge compilation like this because like the the overall sentiment from everybody is like this is insane it's insane that you you like are only charging twenty five dollars for it, right? What an what an incredible bounty for us! But like, are you guys okay? <laughs> yeah. you know? And so I, I don't yeah. see it happening again. But yeah, I, I mean, I'll be playing it anytime. There's like, um, a great game like this, and people are suspiciously quiet about when it's coming to consoles. It's like my now my new default is just imagine if the Switch Two launches with. Hades 2 and UFO 50 like on launch day mm. like anytime it's just quiet for when that stuff's being ported and it's just so perfectly made for that system god if Nintendo was on the ball they wouldn't even need anything else just those two games forget all the <laughs> first part of Nintendo yes. what, what more do you need Come Switch, on. Switch is where that's going to pop off for yes. sure the, the, yeah. like, the demographic I think who is uh, who would, would appeal to to have a retro thing like that and I feel like Nintendo could really showcase it in Nintendo Direct I feel like it would look mm-hmm. great you know, they could just have a big banner in the trailer that says, cancel your Nintendo Switch Online subscription. You don't need it anymore. These are better than those old games, everybody. <laughs> yeah. um, the future is now. Um, Jeff, um, you've also been playing a horrifying game. Uh, kind of. You want me to turn down these lights? Uh, this is Fear yeah. the Spotlight. If if we were in that game right now, we'd all be dead because the spotlights are right on us. And you want to avoid them in that game. Mm-hmm. How crazy is that for a horror <laughs> game? Sucking down you asthma You want to stay out of the light? What? 
Okay, so this is Blumhouse Games, uh, their first big uh, push into games here, the first release. Uh, speaking of Elijah Wood, let's connect all these dots. Elijah Wood's brother is uh, heading up the games here for Blumhouse Games. Oh, yeah. Cool. Zach Woods. Anyways. Zach um, Woods? Is Elijah is, Woods' his brother? I think his name is Zach Wood, isn't it? I There's think. an actor named Zach Woods. He's right. like in, from Silicon Valley. But Elijah Wood's brother probably has the same last name and not a plural version <laughs> of it. Yeah. If there's more than one brother, I thought that's the way it uh, Jeff, right. how is this game and what is this game? Uh, it's good. I beat it, Hanson. Whoa! I got as close to 100%ing it as I'm going to get. Wow. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's not long. It's I. It was like five and a half hours. Um, you know, I played it over like two nights. And uh, I really enjoyed it because I kind of stopped playing Silent Hill. At like right before I started playing it because Silent Hill is just so oppressive and so long and it's it's such a grind to get through and yeah. this is this is like taking that formula and distilling it down to mostly just the puzzles and they're pretty simple puzzles and you kind of you're, you're not gonna get lost you're not gonna know like what you're not supposed to do you, you just kind of like run through it and it's this kind of nostalgia throwback to very ps1 mm -hmm. it's, yes it's funny that this came out the same year as crow country and crow country is is uh coming to consoles now and stuff too but it's both yeah. kind of that throwback polygonal horror game um the uh why uh, suddenly the the name is i can't think of it the black and white puzzle game that i love so much <laughs> lorelei and the laser eyes. lorelei and the laser i think i don't yeah. know why i can think of the name they have a bunch of like ps1 style horror game puzzles like within it oh okay um yeah so how scary is it? Not scary at all. Oh, hmm. and and this was the thing. Like I was I was playing it on my Steam Deck the first the first night that I was playing it, and my four year old came and he kind of <laughs> sat next to me and he and he was watching me play it, and you and you know like the voice acting and stuff and the sound like the sound is is you know is not is not as as retro as everything else sure and so, and so like and so my my wife was sitting next to us on the couch and she was just hearing it and you know it, it does sound very intense and she's like is that age appropriate for him <laughs> and i was like i think it is like it's <laughs> it's really not you know there was like the the main bad character that kind of chases you around yeah, and you have to outrun and, a fire yeah and, and and he he was watching me do that and and after a while he was kind of like Mm, I don't like spooky stuff and and like walked off but it but it's Was he like this looks like shit? No, he wasn't. He wasn't <laughs> thankfully. But but yeah, it's and and I and I don't say that it's not scary like I don't say that as a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sure. it's it's like because I just enjoy the puzzles, I enjoy the kind of vibes of it. The story isn't that, is actually pretty interesting. There's a little mystery that you're unraveling as you're going through it. And so like it has everything without kind of the larger heavier baggage of god i'm i'm gonna feel tense the entire time i'm playing this like and, right. and it's a it's a very short consolidated uh experience yeah that's nice and yeah, you're digging it too Kyle? yeah i it's funny so i played crow country earlier this year and really yeah. liked it a lot uh, i like i think crow country is really good and then also lorelei and laser eyes has this stuff and i've been loving silent hill 2 uh, a lot but I hit a like widely addressed bug with the recent patch. There's like a puzzle that you just cannot get past. And there's like a uh, bloober has all kinds of social media posts of like, we're working on it. We're working on it. Right. So Freaking I'm like, bloober, I am fully stuck in silent Hill too. Like I cannot progress until they patch the game, which, which sucks. And it's funny that uh, like it kind of worked out. Cause I was like, well, let me boot up fear of the spotlight. And I, and as I was playing it, I was like, this timing couldn't be worse because it's like Crow Country exists this year. I'm mm -hmm. lit like Silent Hill 2 is literally out there and now there's this and I, and the first like 30 minutes or so I was like really like just like I, I don't know if I have room for another one of these in my heart like this year and but it like it did pull me in at a certain point and it's like it's because it's so kind of straightforward mm -hmm. that it's like this is like a, a simplified version of what you have been enjoying but has really been making you uncomfortable in Silent Hill 2 yeah. in a weird way, like in a way that I like and that I've been enjoying. So I I think I, especially because I can't play more Silent Hill 2, it like, I don't know, maybe maybe this developer like sabotaged the game somehow. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. they, cool. they really had the timing good for me at least because I would have just there, kept going on Silent Hill 2. There right was one, one puzzle that I did get stuck on mm -hmm. and it is a bug. And I, I think it must and be... In Fear of the Spotlight? Yes. Okay. And it, it must be Steam Deck related because I I got stuck on it and I was going to quit. And I was like, well, 
maybe I should just try and change the control scheme to like simulating a mouse. And that allowed, there was like a lever that I had to grab and move around. Because it's it, there, like all the puzzles are very tactile, which mm -hmm. I also like. You're like, you're always grab, you know, just like clicking on something and grabbing like and a, pulling. Like a cursor it. appears on screen. Yeah, and you yeah. Have to and like, you like, yeah. you know, you're flipping up, you know, like latches on a case or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you're kind of opening all these things. And there was one that was just stuck. And I switched it to mouse controls for like 10 seconds just to do this little puzzle. And then I was able to go mm -hmm. uh, on with it. But yeah, there there is like... I don't want to give away spoilers, but there is there is kind of like a halfway, like in terms of total game time, there's yeah. a halfway point that you get to, and then and then you realize you're only halfway through it, and and they do an interesting thing in that moment um, that that made me even more interested in the story and kind of okay. fleshed out some characters in in a different way mm. that, yeah, I don't think th I'm there that yet. It, it's it's probably I don't want to say it, but it's like. People probably know because it was in early access and stuff like that, and oh. so. Mm. Um, but but it so it, it got more interesting. If you're liking it at enough right now, you're kind of feeling invested in it. Then I would say keep going and. It's and to hear going. that it's not very long. Is like yeah. Is like okay yeah. I I'll play this while I'm waiting for Bloomer mm -hmm. to patch Silent yeah. Hill too. And yeah. that that always feels like a weird like you know, product of what we like. We have so many games to play, and they're so long nowadays. But like, it is, it is just in kind of that you. It made me think of UFO Fifty a lot in terms of like, well, this is this is like one generation later from these games, and you're just oh, giving weird, me yeah. a really nice consolidated five hour experience of this thing, and I walked away very happy with with my playtime with it. Yeah. So. Fear the Spotlight. It's out on everything at this point. If you're looking for a short little horror game there. A little Steam Deck tip. If you hold the Steam button and move the right thumbstick, you can do the cursor at any time. You don't have to switch. You don't have to. Game. You uh, hold the Steam Deck button. The Steam oh, button on the lower left. Those little shortcuts so on that Steam Deck. Still they are new good. to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, Leo and Jeff, are you both playing... Kanitsugami, uh, Path of the Goddess, 2024's Goaty. I haven't started you it. You coward! I know. I, I've downloaded it. I also, even... I also downloaded Link, too, honestly. And then I, compl Hang on. I Link, completely... Hang on. Link, of the Spark? <laughs> no, LinkedIn. Oh, that, right, right. Oh, right, that's right. right. Different, different links. I get so confused. Linked Path of the Goddess. Yes. Uh, okay, but finally, Path of the Goddess. The path has come back around. It was a circular path the whole time, everybody. You, Leo, you've been playing this Capcom game that we love to defend on this podcast. Oh, if you yeah. don't like it, I'm going to throw you out of this freaking studio, dude. Okay. What do you think of <laughs> Kanitsugami Path of the Goddess? I like it as much as you want me to. <laughs> I, I, it's, uh, it's funny to be playing at the same time as Linked Banner of the Spark because it's both, you know, go out on runs and tend to your base thing. Yeah, you're right. It is that thing. It is that thing. <laughs> it's that fun thing. Except yeah. this is darker, like Kyle likes. That's why I like it so much. Wait, and really pretty. Minute. I finished it earlier this year. I really like the game a lot. Yes. Yeah. Did you review it for Game Informer? I, I did it, in, a, in a very complimentary way. It was the kind of game that I just got a code for and checked out and right. finished before the assigned reviewer did, which was, I think it was Wes at the time, yeah. Wes LeBlanc. And I was like, I love this. I'm going to review it because I just, I played it without any obligation and finished it. So What a hero. Yeah, I... Thank you. Thank you for and you acknowledging You stole that, that review from me? I, I did. Yeah. And you just and ripped his, his up pay. right in front of his face and <laughs> threw it at him. Well, he, 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 had, he picked up Lies of P for me earlier the year when I was assigned to that and didn't make it. So <laughs> oh, that's nice. It all worked out. Uh, great game. I really like that game a lot. Yeah, it's cool, right? Yeah, it is. And it's funny because... Um, you know, Jeff, as you were talking about linked fear of the spotlight, I, it, not being scary, Kanitsugami is surprisingly <laughs> scary. If you've got the lights off, if you're just listening to it, which it is a pretty good podcast game, too. Oh, yeah. But, but yeah. the vibes when you are fully focused in on it, the sound design, as it, this growing build as you're yes. doing your day phase before the night monsters come out at you, that's so much, you know, more well done than it needs to be. For again, the loop is very friendly for podcast game. Yeah. Build up your base. Because there's, there's literally no dialogue. There's no spoken dialogue. That's right. It yeah. helps. So can you imagine that freaking game? If it's like, you need to help me clear this path over here, over here. Just the fact that everyone's silent, and because of that, every character is cool, and yes. the world is like a thousand times cooler. <laughs> For sure. The character you are, and yes. the character you are helping, you know, make the path of the spark down to the <laughs> <laughs> down to the end of the level. It's you, but you're like so attached to them, and the little like looks they give each other in the cutscene. It's right. like letting your mind fill in those gaps is so cool, and especially because what is there of story of lore is really effective. And well done. You're kind of what you're as you're building your base. You're unlocking little, tiny 
two sentences about each monster and those are so cool to read the main grunts that are like these crawling mostly heads mostly giant gaping maw mouth guys reading about them it's like they are demons that are forced to be hungry and thirsty forever and everything they put in their mouth turns to dust so that's what awesome. they're coming at you for is to try and hopefully satiate their hunger for once <laughs> <laughs> they just have this unimaginable level of it and everybody has this cool cool little backstory cool specific thing like that and the ones you know you only find out about it after you start fighting them and seeing a new monster coming out of that portal which is also a demon which is a right. demon's chest right it's so intimidating especially because you know they're far away you're back here where the wall is where you set up your defense and you're just like what am i even looking at those designs are so cool kyle pop quiz hotshot yes art style of the year 2024 what you got what's your mount rushmore uh kunitsugami's up there i think so too crow country <laughs> oh <laughs> maybe i don't know right. that's just on my mind you're really putting me on the spot and it's unfair okay frankly. metaphor number one right <laughs> metaphor is cool i did you know i i didn't know this and maybe this has been talked about a lot uh, even on minmax that it's like inspired by sp a specific painter yeah and my wife was like fighting a boss last night and like we pulled up the exact painting that the boss was like modeled huh. after it was like it's really it made me like like the game even more yeah yeah just the fact that they just rip off some old art yeah they just rip it off yeah. there's also some majority <laughs> mask stuff happening deeper into that game which is really exciting yeah it's a good it. game have we talked have we, have we we're going to be talking about it a lot more in the future <laughs> we're planning a max spoilers so we yeah, can really cool. let loose on that but game yeah but, i'd have to kind of yeah i would i'd have to look at a like a list i suppose of like what this the stuff of the year but i don't know if the, anything kunitsugami is one that definitely stands out in terms mm -hmm. of art direction yeah yeah uh good steam deck game great steam deck game for, for sure planet yeah a little on peak on pc too because it is pretty when you got the graphics up high I can. Yeah. When you're playing in the dark. That's right. Don't nice. fear it, Jeffem. I won't. Uh, Jeffem, do you want to scoot a little bit towards Kyle? <laughs> what Just like, I, but I've been out of frame the entire episode. Basically, yeah. But we can we can live with that. And then uh, Kyle, we all scoot? no, 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 no. <clears throat> Just Jeffem scoot. All right. And then Kyle, do you want to scoot your mouth a little closer to the mic and whisper um, <laughs> how this whole thing operates? <laughs> I believe it's Patreon. That was like a different guy. Mm. Patreon, everybody! We have been here for five years. Thanks to your support on Patreon. Find the tier that's sustainable for you. I love when people jump in um, and I message every single person and they're like, ah, I can only do like the $2 tier. I hope that's okay. I hope you aren't mad. It's like, if you are supporting independent games media at $2, that seems sustainable for you. That's more than sustainable for us. Thank you so much. Handshake is what I message them. Shake your hand, bro. There's even a free membership if you just want to keep up with what we're freaking doing. That's well, true. Well, but, but they should pay us. <laughs> oh, they <laughs> just <laughs> getting weird. Um, hey, uh, thanks to some of our biggest supporters. I'm talking about people like I am 8-Bit. They want you to know about the Sea of Thieves vinyl soundtrack, which is available in their wonderful online store. Oh, Jeff, this will be fun. Run up to um, my vinyl collection and go grab the Sea of Thieves uh, soundtrack. We can show it off real quick. Thanks. Go, Jeff, go. God, that guy oh, can run fell. when he needs to. <laughs> He's bleeding. Is he moving? <laughs> nope. We That's lost, right, we everybody. I am 8-Bit's wonderful online store. They have an elaborate, awesome Sea of Thieves vinyl soundtrack. You can grab that in their wonderful online store, and you can use the promo code PASHINGSMUMPKINS for 10% off of everything in I am 8-Bit's cool online store. Coming up into holiday season, if you got a dork in your life, or if you are a dork, you want 10% off a bunch of amazing stuff in their store. Pashing Smumpkins is the promo code you can use. And if you go there and get that Sea of Thieves vinyl or anything else, use that promo code. Hang on, hang on. Jeff Lim's getting a drink. <laughs> he seems to be forgetting that we're live on air. Okay, look oh, at this that freaking thing. It's finally cold. Leo, no. Nice. Hey, no joke, man. Look at how cool this vinyl is. It has I like thought a, you were fucking joking. No, I told you. I'm not joking. It has like a whole freaking storybook. Holy crap. You wow. didn't make that up? No, and then open the vinyl itself. Like, I'm 8-Bit is not messing around. It's freaking incredible. Um, but help support I'm 8-Bit because they support the MinMax community in a huge way by shipping a prize each and every week to whoever has the best community question submitted over there on Patreon. And so this week, whoever has the best community question Ooh, pink. wins the Gravity Falls vinyl soundtrack. Get out of here. Yeah, there's a little oh, pop cute pop-up on every vinyl. Isn't that ridiculous? That's so awesome. That's such a cool color, too. The pinkish red. Yeah. Heck yeah. Uh, so help support I'm 8-Bit because they're quite cool. They've been supporting us for a very long time, and we very much appreciate it. Uh, speaking of vinyl, did you have a present for me, Leo? Is this a good time to have a vinyl corner? The perfect time would have been when Jeff was running up and grabbing vinyls, I think. <laughs> Jeff, you want to run upstairs <laughs> and get that vinyl real quick? I can go do it. <laughs> <laughs> do you know, yesterday I actually, I think, broke my, my two toes on my, on my right foot. 
What'd you do? I stubbed them so hard. Oh, no. Uh, I have them taped together, and I've been hobbling around until I just did that run. And actually, they held up okay, so oh, geez. I'm feeling pretty good about it. My wife, my wife hurt her toe really bad once, and like we went to the doctor, and it was, in fact, fractured. And then the the, the doctor was like, we, there's nothing you can do. Yeah. You can't put in a cast or anything. I, I learned line. that, uh, I learned like, that oh, the last God. time. Last time? I'm, when I dropped, I dropped a big weight on it. If you guys remember that, <laughs> quit uh, messing up your feet, dude. Uh, I know. All right, this is a garbage bag with a vinyl soundtrack inside. Leo, you want to give us the story here? So we did a show that just went up called uh, Vinyl Shopping. It was new show overflow, so it was a Twitch goal to bring back a new show plus show that didn't quite make it. And uh, me and Dan Reichert and Matt Helgeson went to a local record store and perused to find something just for you. We found a few that you might like. Is there there several in here? Yeah. So it's funny because uh, I've seen like a couple comments on the on the YouTube video. I'm trying to dodge the comments just in case someone is really explicit. So most of the comments I've seen are like, yeah, what album would you get for Ben? I don't know. <laughs> it turns out we it's a kind of a mystery. We tried to theorize a lot about your music taste. Yeah. Okay. So this whole video is up on YouTube. By the way, I watched like the first five minutes of that and I was like, this is what MinMax was made for. I love this content so much. Just to have Matt Helgeson, host of Crossfade, who is the you know, host of the music podcast that we had here for years at MinMax, like just to have him unload all of his music knowledge, like, oh my God. I've been holding off on watching that full thing because I didn't want to spoil the album that you got for me. So Right. So yeah, no, he's the perfect here. house for that. Here we go. This is... Oh, fantastic! Hey, is there a phone number on here? Oh, uh, Jackie the Joke Guy from Howard Stern. I saw this clip you sent me. I didn't think you were actually going to buy this. It did, I and the clip. They did. I saw the clip as well, and it really does line up with Ben's sense of humor, this guy. Right. I got to say, I've heard him tell all of those jokes. <laughs> there was one joke in there where I was like, I do like that one. Where it's some, Let me the parasite. Yeah, you, you tell it, Leo. Tell that great joke. Um, so a guy goes up to a blonde, the other person's a blonde, the first guy doesn't matter. Uh, the guy says, I had sex with a Brazilian this past weekend. The blonde says, oh, you poor C word, which I, you know, I heard this joke in like fifth grade. It didn't have that element. <laughs> Not needed. But he had the blonde doing a voice calling this up, the first gentleman, the C word. How many of, is a Brazilian? Now that's a joke. Jeff, um, that's the biggest laugh Jeff has had in the last five years. That is how many is a Brazilian? I felt alive. <laughs> Ooh, okay. This was a Dan pick, Florence and the Machine. Florence and the Machine mm. album. Wow. How big, how blue, how beautiful. Seminal album for him, it turns out. Yeah. Really? Did you play the first hour of Final Fantasy XV? Yeah. Then you know Florence and the Machine? Is it, was it Stand By Me? Was it our cover of it or something? Yeah. I, I've been meaning to listen to more Florence and the Machine. She's this great. Is, this nice. is perfect. This is great. Thank this is you. not a joke recommendation at all. That's like a legitimate good. Does she have a number for some wacky uh, <laughs> C-word jokes? Uh, and then this next one's a Matt Helgeson recommendation? Uh, yes. Oh. It's the Jurassic Park soundtrack. Love it. Love it. Curtis Mayfield, Superfly. Love it. Mm -hmm. Now, is it because I like James Brown that he thought of me for this? That came up for sure. Okay. But awesome. it's also like, what do you get the person you don't necessarily know everything about their music taste? Right. Who on earth can listen to Curtis Mayfield and not feel joy? This <laughs> is fantastic. Well, let's test it with Jeffem. All right. I'm going to listen to all <laughs> of these. Ready awesome. for joy number two, Jeffem? <laughs> oh, my God. I can't handle it. This is sweet. Thanks, guys. What a sweet gift for the five-year anniversary of Min Max. <laughs> I'm really eager for your uh, reaction. Yeah. All right. I'll listen to those and review them for sure. Can't wait. Um, all right. Community questions. Here we go, everybody. We got some good stuff. Do you want to start out with uh, a bar? Barn burner? Yeah. Sure. You want to burn this freaking barn down? Yeah. Dan Valone writes in and says, Congrats on five years. Game of the year speed round. Rank Minmax's five goaties from one to five. Great. So these are previous goaties, right? Correct. Okay. Previous goaties from the last five years of Minmax. Love Here we it. go, everybody. Resident Evil 2 remake. Final Fantasy VII Remake, or how original we are. <laughs> Another game that reminded us of our youth. Um, no. Uh, then Chicory, <laughs> A Colorful Tale, mm. Elden Ring, Baldur's Gate 3. Mm. Okay. Rank them and spank Wow, we em. gave it to Baldur's Gate 3 and nobody finished that. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> no, they're sure they're going to finish it any day. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how do you want to do this? Just we all just share our opinions? Uh... Like no, Elden no Ring. let's just say the right one. Right. Elden Ring's right number rating. one. <laughs> yeah. I, I <laughs> give opinions. Look, I love 7 Remake more but i think elden ring is the correct number yeah, one it is yeah. sure yeah no crap okay yes, yes. i think for me it goes re2 chicory Baldur's, final fantasy 7 elden i haven't played the last two really i think 
and I love chicory. I yeah. I think it's a five. I think chicory is a five. Sorry, chicory. Yeah. yeah, I like you. You're you're nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the developer's next game, sweetheart. Beastie Ball, by the way. Um, oh, yeah. Charles talks oh, about nice. it on this episode of Bonus Pod. I hadn't played Chicory when we gave it to it, but I have played it now, and I loved it. Loved it. My partner art, played art. it together. You got the co-op with the second person doing the painting. Oh, yeah. oh, nice. Additional painting? Fun. Are now, any of us Baldur's Gate people? Are Jeff we, insisted that he was. He pushed okay. it over the line I, to be number I, one, I, so it's up to him to I make I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, it would be my number two. Uh-huh. I mean, the first five hours were great, Jeff says. I played 80 hours, did you get okay. out of Act One? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it was a great eighty hours, right, regardless. Right. Okay. I, I think I could see that as number two. Yeah, I think realistically, I think let's stop trolling. My my next one would be Resident Evil. I think. What was Resident Evil remake is awesome. What was the yeah. other one? What's the what is the other one? I Final, Fantasy. Final Fantasy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, I, look, I, yeah, again, Final Fantasy number four, Resident Evil number three. Absolutely right. We're all on the same page here. I, honestly, I can. <laughs> Yeah, I can okay live with that. that. I mean, all I right. disagree, but all right. do, you, do you think Final Fantasy has fallen because of Rebirth? No, it's only gotten minds. better actually. In my mind. Um, so number one is Elden Ring, <laughs> then Baldur's Gate three, then Resident Evil two remake, then Final Fantasy seven remake, then Chicory: A Colorful Tale. Wait, Goaty can be easy. Goaty can be easy. Goaty can be easy. Goaty can be easy. Oh, they're this? gonna burn the barn now. <laughs> <laughs> is this year's gonna be better than any of those? What came out this uh, year? Oh, yeah, what is my... I mean, there's Astrobot and Balatro. UFO 50. And Balatro. Oh, UFO 50. Yeah. I, think, yeah. I think this year is going to be kind of a middle middle stack. Yeah. I don't think anything from this year is going to be better than Elden Ring or Baldur's Gate 3. I don't, Elden Ring yeah, DLC. I don't think so. Elden Ring yeah. DLC. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> That's true. Tricky. Um, all right. Uh, not Weirder says, Hi, when you started Min-Max in 2019... Hello, Not Weirder. Thank you. Um, what's the furthest year you thought about for the future of content? That's an interesting... We started in 2019? <laughs> A couple months later. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, I I have. It's probably sound that I'm too busy, but I have a big dock of content. Trust me, I have big dock energy, right? But no, don't don't high five me. Oh you don't have to, yes, you know. we support each other here. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. All right, this is too much. <laughs> Anyways, but it's it's 38 pages of ideas of stuff I want to do. So even if it wasn't like. In the year 2026, do this. It's a matter of like, well, obviously this is Min-Max content and it's been yeah. five years and we just haven't gotten to it yet. There's been a lot of things like that of like, slam dunk, it's right there. Why haven't we gone to the Wisconsin Dells yet? It's just like it just <laughs> never lines up in a frustrating way, right? Um, but anyways, they say, were there any predictions for what Min-Max would look like in a year, five years in, or ten? Uh, I guess specifically, specifically Jeff and Kyle, if you have any Gosh. memories of kind of predictions or thoughts like before we launched, as we launched, all that stuff. Not, I mean, I, I, I know maybe I sounded, I know I always sound sarcastic, Ben, but like truly it was like, <laughs> we'll see. Was it, it was, I wasn't thinking that far ahead myself because I was like, I, I don't know what this thing is going to be. I mean, there was like, yeah. there was always that fear of like, we launched the Patreon and like, it doesn't do anything. You know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. we would have those conversations early on <sighs> yeah, where worst. you were like, I mean, you, you went out on the limb the furthest cause you financed the whole thing. Like Jeff and I and Serial were kind of just along for the ride frankly also quit my know? job for it, it that, like, yeah <laughs> right yeah. that's a major one right. yeah where we were like we were all three the other three of us were just eager to sort of have some kind of potential employment and like and, right. and continue to do what we like to do and obviously it wasn't fully about that but like yeah the conversations a lot of them were like I rem- and they're recorded i think if you're a supporter you can hear them there's yes, a lot of yes. stuff of like yeah so if you're yeah, real quick i think that's a fun plug yeah if yeah. you're at the five dollar tier on patreon you'll unlock the podcast feed and it's really old in there so you have to search in the podcast feed but there's uh something called the actual meetings that formed min max yeah and you can hear the two literally earliest meetings we had as a group about forming min max so you can go back and listen to that if you're a five dollar supporter which is going to be surreal probably but I, cool. I remember yeah i remember you ben even being like you know i'm, I'm gonna quit game informer i'm gonna start this thing up if it doesn't go i, I can i can i can contract and freelance to support myself that was the plan. while if this thing is sort of like flailing um but it and then when it didn't flail initially, I don't feel like I was, I'm, I'm talking for myself here, I wasn't like, let's make huge plans, like this thing right. is doing better than we hoped, yeah. like it was kind of like, well, let's let's take it all in and go day by day and like, let's not blow this thing up too much or anything like that. It'd be that, funny if somebody, if Surreal was like, let's blow this thing up, like, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's spend that money and let's go to China, I don't know, some elaborate plan, yeah. yeah. Um, he yeah, is no, always talking about going to China. He never <laughs> stops talking about going to China. No, that was, I mean... Yeah, investment wise, that was a scary thing of like, I'm trying to think. It was like you know, the this table, the chairs, the mics, the mixer, new computer, 
I'm like, altogether, it was 10000 bucks to start MinMax, and it was just that feeling of like, hope I can make this money back at least. Like, it's going to be yeah. a weird deal. And it, yeah, it, we eventually got there. It was a nice day, like a couple months in, where it's like, oh, fully reimbursed myself for that 10000 bucks. That yeah, feels great. Nice. nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, full... Uh, so yeah, so when we first launched it, I remember before we launched it, uh, saying like, if it hits $4,000, like, we can make that work. And that was under the assumption, which I was fully under the assumption that it was going to be, we're going to make some money from Patreon and then I'd survive uh, by just doing freelance video stuff. Like, because I remember, I mean, there's a lot of people that were super important to launching MinMax. And like, yeah, I had a lot of conversations with Mark McDonald from mm. uh, formerly, or now currently of 8.4 Play, but also Enhanced Games and stuff like that. But like talking about the name of MinMax and spitballing names with him. Like, I was like, I think I'm going to call it Super Heartland. He's like, that's the worst idea. He's like, that's a truck commercial. That's not a good name. And you're like, that's what we're going for. <laughs> we're trying to make a truck commercial. No, but he was very big on like, you need to go out and just freelance video stuff. Like mm. studios would love to have you. Publishers would love to have you. What are you doing, you idiot? And so that was the thing of like, okay, so whatever gap is missing from the Patreon funding to make this operational, I'll just do that. And mm. then we get out of the gate and I was like, I don't think I need to do that. I think we can keep building this and this this will totally work. Um, but yeah, Jeff, do you want to... What are your memories of launching that thing? Uh, similar to Kyle in just that um, I think I weaseled my way onto it. That's first true. First of all. Yeah. I, I heard that you, I think you had already been talking to Kyle and Serial. And a I was lot. like, hey. And a lot of those meetings were don't tell Jeff. <laughs> yes, they were. And then someone blew it. <laughs> and I was like, I would be very interested in this. It is, it is wild. I went back. So I have a couple of Google Docs of like early ideas a lot of brainstorming a lot of just thoughts i'm like okay if we launch something this is kind of the messaging i want to hit so it's like pages and pages of messaging by the way if you're at the backstage past here i'll share all these docs and you can see uh all these early notes and i had one that was like people <laughs> and it was like kyle surreal and then so many other people i'm like what? what what was i think that's such an odd pick but it was so minnesota focused that i was like i wrote down kyle like brandon from acme like, remember that guy who worked at Acme? He was like a nice dude. Yeah, I, was cool like, guy. I, was, I was like, who have I talked to about games in Minnesota that might be kind of fun? I was below Brandon. You were <laughs> below? <laughs> Jeff, um, I love you dearly. I am you were not, not on the surprised. list. I'm and Brandon not. from Acme is on the list because it was 100% of the assumption that, like, there's no way Jeff would be into that. Like, it, huh. it wasn't pulling teeth, but I just felt like we're always annoying you of, like, hey, do you want to be in a video? Because it's like, I, overall. Like, you're, you're talking about during the Game Informer During time. the Game Informer yeah. era. It was very much. The window of like, I I don't want to be in that personality dog and pony show. I don't know what this crap is. Uh, and so that wasn't it for me. There were plenty of people at Game Informer that were like that, but it was always I have so much stuff to do. Right. Mm -hmm. I can and like I never got asked to do all the fun replace <laughs> stuff. Like very rarely did I get to do that. Sure. And and otherwise it was like I can't I can't spare you know the two hours to do that. I would have liked to, but. Mm -hmm. It was, everybody was very busy there all the time. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, in that, um, in that one of the girl, uh, Google Docs, Google Docs, <laughs> um, I wrote down just kind of like goals overall. I called it Project Peepo, which is really dumb, but apparently that's what I wrote in this Google <laughs> like Doc. Like an Overblood reference? Yeah. Okay. And I wrote like, right. debating how similar to make the name to Game Informer, Fun Informer, we could call it, or We the Peepo, Fun Hunt, I wanted to call Min Max. Well, I still think that's a fun, we fun were, thing to say. We were almost called We the Peepo. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too late. Yeah, it's not too late. That was like hitting it over the nose because like, I don't know, we need the community support. Hopefully if we lean into Peepo, which is a character from a PS1 horror game that we played through <laughs> yeah. at, at Game Informer, pretty deep cuts. Min Max is like, it has an explanation behind it, but it doesn't demand an explanation before you even know what you're saying. The way we right. the Peepo does. <laughs> <laughs> it could, honestly, a bad name could have sunk this whole thing. I, I sincerely yeah. believe that. Like, I think, you know, I, I think we landed on a good one eventually. Um, but I wrote down the goal for Min Max, mixing no clip and easy allies. Mm. That's what I was like. That's Minus it. Jeff. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no Jeffs allowed, so you could still have right. cork on sometimes. Right. That's only a singular. Right. Jeff. Oh, yeah. smart. Yeah. Smart. We, well, we got to have Gersman on every once in a while. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're Keely. only human. Does yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, that's, just, spell it wrong. that's just not me at that point. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. No, sorry. Just to follow up on that thought, but Jeff, I'm like, yeah. So it was just a certain point I called you to be like, do you have any plans for the future? And you were just shockingly eager to jump in and it was it was confusing to me but obviously welcome yeah i can't i can't remember 
I can't remember what that conversation was, but I was like, yes, definitely super interested. Please <laughs> give me something to do in the meantime. Yeah. Because uh, Kyle, if you don't mind me, I was going back to these notes oh. and I had notes from like calls with everybody. Yeah. By the way, shout out to so many people, but like, you know, uh, Bloodworth from Easy Allies talked to him. Brandon Jones from Easy Allies talked to him. Chris Cochin, Coakland in the community. I've talked to him. Like a lot of people I would talk to. Beating down before, Brian. Yeah, yep. I've talked to a lot of folks before launching this whole thing just to try and test the waters. Imran is like secret juggernaut for this whole thing, which we can get into mm -hmm. in a bit. But, um, oh, so I looked at your notes, Kyle, and you, do you mind if I say jobs that you didn't get? Because you're basically like, oh, I sure. might get this job. You're like, you're like I'm. I don't know I'm close to landing a job point. at the Washington Post, so I don't know if I can do min max. Oh, is what right. the notes yeah, said. Yeah, I was talking uh, uh, to launcher. Yeah. 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 And then also I wrote Pixar. Were you talking to Pixar? <laughs> no. <laughs> just I in just, case you want to keep your schedule. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> just in case they have an opening. They could call. Why on earth would I have said I don't Pixar? know? I, I don't mean, know. I certainly, I, I certainly looked at what uh, openings they had okay. if anything could fit, but I don't think I would have been like. You know, I saw an opening on their website that I'm feeling pretty good about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that was. Huh, um, but it's fun to go back and look at, like, Serial also had some places that he was interviewing for. It's like, oh, God, it could have broke a thousand different ways. And that so many things with MinMax early on, it was just, like, every angle could have broken a thousand different ways. But, like, it, my memory of it is at a certain point realizing, and I don't know which came first, but realizing, like, oh, I have a space in my basement where I could set up a little studio. Like, maybe we should try and do this. And it was, like, pretty shortly after the layoffs hit at Game Informer, because it was, like, August of 2019, the layoffs hit. And it was, mm -hmm. like, we can get into more of that in a bit. Um, but it was, like, I need to get out of here. I could do that Patreon thing. Um, and then Imran Khan, he, like, posted and shared, like, hey, there's an angel investor who wants to fund a new site. Uh, do you remember this whole thing? Vaguely, yeah. Yeah, and so... I was like, was uh, it attached to? It was. Okay, right. Um, the, it, from the Matrix. Right, okay, that's yeah. right. <laughs> and so, yeah, so I reached out and I was like, is anyone else going to jump on this opportunity? Uh, and I guess I was the only one who did. So I talked to this guy on the phone and like, he's like, yeah, I just really like Game Informer. Um, and I want to fund like a new site and we'll just give you a bunch of money and it'll be all good and you can kind of do whatever you want and it'll be really hands off. And I was like, what is this? And so then the original idea was like, oh, we'll make like a new site with like writing on it and all this stuff. And then it was Leo talking to Leo who said like, why, why would you do anything with writing? <laughs> you're, like, <laughs> you're like, in what world is that going to work out well? Yeah. Uh, to be very blunt, you're just like, just make it all video. Like it's what you want to do anyway. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> that makes way more sense. And so then, Talked to the angel investor. I got to the point where he's like, he's like, yeah, okay, just have your lawyer contact my lawyer and we'll get this hooked up. And I was like, I don't have a lawyer. <laughs> I would have called Haley McLean. Oh, Haley, help. Um, not that she's not a great lawyer. Um, but I, I just, she was not a lawyer yet. At that that point, was right? my problem. Yeah, she kept saying, Ben, I'm not a lawyer yet. You called her up, are you a lawyer yet? She's like, no, yeah. not quite. I was like, all right, okay. Yeah. So it was that whole thing of like, well, I don't need to build a whole site with like, whole writing aspect and stuff like that it's like if it's just like a youtube channel of patreon like i can do that and i can fund that and then i don't have to have no lawyer needed. some strange legal nonsense and an angel investor which still sounds scary to this day and so that kind of split it from that point uh, yeah who knows how that would have gone I, yeah probably not well <laughs> I, I don't know i don't think so so i mean it's it's a long story we can probably tell the full story at some point but like i know you two weren't there but leo and i cannot convey how effed the tone in the Game Informer office was after those layoffs. Like, I, I was going it. back and looking at some of my notes from that time, and it was, like, jaw-dropping. Like, I forgot how insane <laughs> this was of everybody just being, like, F this. Like, we went to a brewery the day of the layoffs, I think. Mm -hmm. It was like, we need to talk, and it shouldn't be in this office. And the conversation was, like, get out, everybody. Yeah. I remember somebody had the right take where they're, like, like somebody very wise is, like, Effectively, we all got laid off today, but imagine that those of us still here just have six months of severance, uh, but everyone needs to get the hell out of here. There were talks of, like, does everyone just walk right now? Because mm. uh, it was just such a lightning bolt from GameStop out of the out of the dark, and everyone was, you know, especially 
higher ups at Game Informer uh, were so kind of distraught about that idea of like, oh, I thought I had control or some semblance of control over right. this outlet, and then just feeling like, yoink, never mind. Mm. We're gonna make terrible decisions above your head, and you will feel if, every if ounce of guilt. If something like this had to happen, at least they would get brought in and like help make the right decisions or whatever, right. as best decisions as could be made. And yeah, so so everybody at every level was completely disheartened. It was wild uh, times, and so yeah, and then. It was, I'm curious if you remember this. I remember at a certain point talking to you, Leo, about like, I'm getting out. Like, will you come <laughs> and we can run this thing and kind of split it because I'm going to need some production help. Uh, and you were like, uh, I'm going to stay at Game Informer for a bit. Do you remember that conversation? What was your memory of my reason for not doing it? Um, I wrote it down somewhere. Um, I think it was just like, you're like, I need the word the, salary. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I need the financial stability for a little bit. And also yeah. you're in a spot it's, of when I left, they gave you a raise. Because yeah, you were in a spot, which I think was your reasoning of like, I'm needed so bad at Game Informer. This is obviously effed, but they're going to give me a big pay bump because of this, and I just kind of want to ride it for a while. Yeah, it was like I didn't... I was very bad with money until pretty recently. And when the layoffs hit, that was the first time I was like, oh, I should probably start saving money. (laughs) (laughs) And so I was like, I need a few more months, especially with the higher salary, at least... Uh, build something up I before to- I, I totally get it. Like, I don't defend yeah. yourself. Right? Well, you went back to Game Informer, so of course you were Yeah, like, and it yeah. went great. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it was funny. Like, I remember some people were saying when those layoffs happened, like, oh, Game Informer has got like another five to seven years on it. And I, and I remember just being like offended by how wrong and stupid that was. And I was yeah. like, ultimately, they had another five it years. It was five like, years. You know what? Yeah. Hey, yeah. You know what? <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah, I apologize. <laughs> I was way up. I thought that was laughably yeah. a stupid thing to say. Uh. But maybe not overall. Um, but yeah, yeah, Leo, I remember you saying, because someone very poetically is like, look, Titanic's going down at Game Informer here in 2019. But they're like, I want to be the band playing on the Titanic as it goes down. And then Leo, I remember you saying, I want to be the guy with the machine gun shooting into the floor to help it sink faster. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. It was very good. What I remember saying that day was to Matt Miller saying... You know, what do we do? Where do we go from here? I said, I don't want to be here every day half-assing it, but I'm certainly not going to whole-ass it. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> yeah. And then it slowly recovered. They hired new people. I think that was like a whole breath of fresh air for Game Informer. And like, yeah. it was so nice to get like a younger generation there that it wasn't just traumatized and bummed out about like, what do you mean we work in the reality of media? Yeah. <laughs> we're in Minnesota. Yeah. We're untouchable. I was like, oh, no, no. Right. That, more, that was the weird feeling. More young people who are excited to be there. And like, I don't know. It, it's, we were holding it back, I think, from being there, being so jaded. So not wanting to do anything. Yeah. Not seeing the point in doing anything. Mm. Right, right. And so then also, I forget if I talked about this a lot, but there was also, I was interviewing for a job at Wired, um, you know, as this whole thing went down. So and whole, that was before the layoffs, right? Even? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because I was... I was pretty, not fried, but I was pretty frustrated after like nine years at Game Informer and was like, yeah. I I want more control over the messaging and what we're doing here because it's a little scattershot for my likes for nine years of like, if we could just communicate things this way. Blah, blah. Yeah. It drove me nuts. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so there's that whole saga. But then I was on my way out the door, ready to launch MinMax, like gearing up for MinMax, right? But um, it was a whole race against time because we had a cover at Game Informer for a bunch of Blizzard games. And I was like, Overwatch 2 and Diablo 4. Um, what else was... There's a third. Was it Hearthstone? There's a third cover for Game Informer? I don't remember. Um, so anyways, it was like this... I did my free Hong Kong thing in the Overwatch 2 gameplay description, which was I thought of when you said machine gun shooting the floor. I was like, yeah. I guess I kind of was doing that somewhere. Yeah, what, wait, what, tell the story. Oh, yeah, we just had... We had already done the trip, right? And then the layoffs, and then we put it up? Or was it... No, it was it a few months later. I think it was the layoffs and then the trip? Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I just it, uh, uh, the Blitz Chung controversy was happening then when the Hearthstone player had gotten kicked off for saying Free Hong Kong had been like denied his prize winnings. Right. So I wrote the description in a way where I could highlight the letters in order to say Free Hong Kong, capitalize the letters. And did you get in trouble for that? Uh, kind of. Andy Matt got in a lot more trouble than me. Ah. Uh. I was like, I don't care what happens. Uh, I will face punishment. I'll, worst case scenario, I'll be fired. But then real worst case scenario was nobody wants to fire me because they like me. And Andy has to do hours of phone calls of like cleaning up at my mess. So I felt really guilty about that. But it was a, yeah, just a tough time. I was acting out. Yeah. <laughs> Death Stranding P video. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I uploaded that to Game Informer's YouTube channel. <laughs> it was a weird time. And so, yeah, that was that was the thing. Is like there was a ticking clock to launch MinMax. And I'm like, I need to launch this before we reveal at one of multiple times in the game industry's you know, history where everyone said, 
Blizzard is untouchable. This Blitzstrung controversy is so red hot. F you, Blizzard. I can't believe you're throwing this player under the bus in such a huge way. Um, and so that was the race to launch MinMax. It's like, I need to launch this thing before we announce Game Informer celebrating Blizzard. And everyone <laughs> has a negative take on Game Informer. And so, Interesting. So it was like a week, I think, before that Blizzard cover launch where I was like, I need to get out right now, launching MinMax right now. And Because the trip would have been a few weeks before that, and we read about yeah. the controversy, me and Reiner walking to the office <laughs> oh in the morning God. on the trip. <laughs> that's wild. So I'm so thankful. It's like, that's another thing that MinMax... Maybe, you know, who knows? But if it had a worse name and it launched after everybody hated Game Informer because we were associated with Blizzard at a time when Blizzard was near its bottom, not quite there. That was for the next couple of years. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah but it's just a bunch of wild uh, bits of timing there for the launch of Min Max. Um, does that answer your question, Not Weirder? Hopefully we got a lot. Yeah, what was oh, the question? Oh, also, just like <laughs> predictions for all this stuff. And we, we can get... This. So did you plan on doing so much not game stuff? So much out in the world doing... Other random yeah. things. I feel like that was yeah, because you would want to do podcast interviews at Game Informer, and like you would get pushback sometimes of like, why, why do we, why do you, why are you going out of your way to get this person? Or maybe I'm exaggerating the pushback. Podcast, just having interviews on the podcast for yeah, episode? or it might have even been in your own head, really, where you felt like it's like I want to have like a, a good example was um, the guy who did all the stop motion for Jurassic Park. Oh, Phil Tippett. Phil Tippett, who you yeah. had on Min Max. That was the kind of thing, like the kind of interview you wanted to have on a Game Informer show episode. Yeah. And I don't know if it was so much that internally people were pushing back on you or you just felt like you had to really defend the idea. Because, I mean, I yeah. know I was always like, yeah, put put whoever you want <laughs> on there. But obviously I wasn't the decision maker. I had no control over that. Right. Yeah, it definitely, Yeah, I wanted it to be a little bit of a mix. Uh, yeah, with Min Max, I'm like, okay, games is kind of the heart of it. I remember thinking a lot of like, maybe this was later, like the comparison of like the ringer and be kind of like sports is kind of the cornerstone, but obviously I want to hit other stuff. And like, Remember the idea that I had, <laughs> I had for a long time at Game Form, we never did. And I was like, it's this type of thing that I want to do at Min Max. And we still haven't done it. Which is <laughs> a, uh, it was a show called Real World Open World. And I'm like, let's just get Ben Reeves, <laughs> get a camera, go outside. Gold and then already. <laughs> find, find some quests to go on, ask people who need help. And then like wherever that storyline leads... That's where it leads. In, you know, <laughs> imagine a nicer version of like a Nathan for you or something, right? We could just, do that so well with the new camera following him third person. Yes. Mm. Slightly right? above his head. Right, right. Oh my and so God, it's like that, awesome. that type of feel of like, let's get out into the world. Let's focus on Minnesota. Let's highlight some stuff. But yeah, originally Min Max was going to be um, like all Minnesota focused. We can talk about what, what happened there in a bit. Um, and it was going to be like the rest of the podcast and we have the crew. But primarily it was going to be about contracting out with people that we knew to create shows and they'd kind of run their own shows in this larger network and it'd be a mm. podcast network. We use that terminology a lot. Um, and we did that with Crossfade, Matt Helgeson's music podcast, it's like that model, but for a bunch of other stuff. And then it turns out that just the community latched on, like we just want to support that main crew that's on the podcast it was kind of the tone is like, oh yeah, that's right. That's kind of the gravitational well is we should just build up more of a core crew instead of we're here, but primarily we're a network for all these different things. And so maybe at some point we can get back to that larger network idea, but that was the original idea. And it just kind of gravitationally pulled into like, okay, it is more of just the cohorts. And then mm. we obviously have friends of the show and a bunch of other stuff and CrossFade went for a long time and stuff. But originally it was much more of kind of a scattered approach to all the content, which is weird hmm. in retrospect. Um, let's see. Uh, Graham Jones wrote in saying, what's wrong with you? Why did that question <laughs> take so long to answer? Uh, saying, hey, how, well, let's get into it. <laughs> how, if at all, might MinMax content have changed if the pandemic didn't happen? Also, thank you all for the great content over the years. I can wholeheartedly say that the weekly content is something I look forward to and fully enjoy. The cohorts are all such good people, even Jeffem, and the community <laughs> embodies everything I want the world to be. Wow, that's very sweet. My oh. wife and I absolutely love you guys. Here's so many more years. Thank you so much, Graham. Very sweet. Um, yeah, the pandemic obviously was huge for a lot of different reasons for the entire world, I'd argue. Um, hmm. But it that was, was crazy. I mean, that was like, what, three months in, at least in my mind? Well, yeah, because it started October of 2020 or 2019, and then March of 2020 is when everything yeah. changed. And it was just like, I remember just a slow petering out of like, all right, there's maybe a couple episodes where it's like just Jeff and I in the studio and everyone else was remote. And just the tech for the remote nature, it took so long before it got hopefully at a level now where it sounds good. Yeah, um, everybody was buying home setups at once. Yeah, that was, mm -hmm. I mean, the deepest dive on 
7 remake like the tech for that is just all over the place Ronnie's <laughs> camera is like 140p like I don't understand <laughs> what's going on. on like two discord accounts at one it's point such a mess. <laughs> one it's for such video one for mess. voice it's so strange <laughs> so that was like kind of a pulling the ripcord but it was almost it worked out well for us because it was like well we're so Minnesota focused we're going to highlight Minnesota focused things but around that time we already were feeling that pull of like oh it's kind of a core cohort thing and maybe it could work with people if they were fully remote mm. um, you know because I'm trying to remember if Anna had joined by then I think she probably had um, but then it was a certain point of like oh that kind of frees us up now we can bring Janet on uh, mm. now we can pull all these other people because it's like people like Jacob and Kelsey it's like oh it'd be so nice to have them on but you know it's a Minnesota thing and it's like it's so nice just to have that cold splash of water of reality of like whatever dude they're great they, well, people want to hear them talk can you hear them talk have them on MinMax content it's like, oh yeah. of course yeah. and so that was that was the biggest thing is like yeah. Janet yeah. and then Kelsey and uh, what's his name Jacob <laughs> right yeah so and the then, pandemic and, like urged that along yeah. yeah yeah that's interesting I mean it kind of I don't know. I, this wasn't. This was just like a thought I had. It wasn't like conversations we had or anything. But I was hitting a point when I was at Game Mill specifically. I was yeah. working full time at Game Mill, where I was like, I, I, if Min Max was like fully like in person again, like I would have to just drop it. Like I just right. would have to back away from it. That's that is what it is. It wouldn't. You know, I just like I wouldn't be able to do it. And I remember even having a thought where. Uh, I was getting really sort of overwhelmed with everything, like Game Mill specifically and mm. Min Max and like all these things. And I remember even having the thought of like, well, I'm going to keep doing MinMax while it's remote, as long as as long as the second it's not remote anymore, oh, that's interesting. I'll have to drop it. Like I just have to. It's not it, it, nothing personal or anything. Yeah. And it was funny. I, I was like, well, I'll just I'll just keep uh, while while we're doing it remote, I'll just keep doing it until and then it, and then that just kind of now has become the standard, which has been really helpful for me. Yeah. Uh, and it let me stick around. You know. That's kind of the weird part behind the scenes too. Is just like, I mean, it's it's a constant puzzle, which is very fun, but can be stressful at times. Of just everybody's different everybody has their different levels of how much they want to be involved but overall it's like we need to be sustainable and so finding those levels of like what do you want to do with min max when is it too much when is it too little and like knowing kyle you are on the edge there if it would have been like all right we're still everybody coming to my house every single week to record great goatee hunt and the min max show at a, at a certain point it probably been like i gotta bow out yeah no for and sure and so yeah. just finding that for everybody's been a hidden challenge that the community thankfully doesn't have to see but I don't know if I'm going to do it too much but I mean I remember having a walk with you Leo where at a certain point you're like yeah. I gotta drop Min Max I can't do it anymore which is like okay well let's find a way hopefully to make this work and it was a matter of I mean I don't know how behind the scenes you want to get but that was a matter of like I think I need to go hourly instead of like a lump sum because it feels yeah. more one to one right which yeah. I don't think was even part of the conversation you're just like if there's anything that we could do differently that would make it work let me know. And I really thought about it. And I was like, yeah, that would change my relationship with the work if it was hourly versus the, the lump sum. And Cause, Yeah, because the lump sum, let me put words in your mouth. But yeah. I mean, for full fun things, people can choose if they want lump sum or hourly here at Min Max, right? And so you're in a camp of like, if it's set, I either feel like I'm being overworked for not enough pay or I feel guilty for doing too little. Is that like the emotions? It's like, this yeah. sucks on both sides <laughs> of the spectrum. Exactly. And even now doing hourly producer stuff, behind the scenes stuff, it's like I... Want, have this idea for this edit I want to do this put a little more work into this TikTok or whatever and I go okay well and if it pushes me past into the next hour like I'm compensated for that versus right. like I shouldn't do that so I can get back to other stuff yep. and have the yeah and that's all thanks to people supporting on Patreon where it's like okay we can afford to bring Leo on to help out uh, for editing these things yeah and, I forget how I fully was about to quit yeah because it really did change my relationship with him that's yeah it's wild history I mean it is weird too thinking about all the different branching paths where we're doing the deepest dive on Animal Crossing March of 2020, right? And he was like, okay, who should we have on that? And I would love to know my order, but at a certain point, I remember asking Audrey, who's done some art for Min Max. She did like the pillow of our faces and all that stuff, like the early Final Fantasy VII remake thing. And she's like, oh, I don't think I can quite make it work. And I was like, okay, then it was either like Kelsey, Sarah, or Anna of like, I don't, okay, I guess this them. And then like, okay, then the deepest dive in Animal Crossing was Sarah, Anna, and Kelsey and I. And I was like, okay, that is like a core group now. Yeah. And like, you never know how that could have shifted a thousand different ways. And so, yeah, I forget if that was Sarah's first content, but I, I met Sarah years and years ago back when she was at the U. And then it was always like, she was 
she eventually went to Japan and ate four, and she was so good on the eight four play podcast. And I was like, well, at some point, I would love to do stuff with her because I think she's so funny and so cool. <laughs> um, she's and so, gonna totally redesign my closet. Yeah, she knows how to do this. <laughs> yeah, um, and so yeah, it was always a matter of like, okay, at some point, we need to bring Sarah on. And so, I mean, full behind the scenes thing, it was like, okay, we're bringing on somebody else. Who should we bring on? Should we bring on somebody else? We're bringing Sarah on now. Okay, maybe let's go Janet first and then Sarah. Not that there's a ranking <laughs> for any of them, but it's like, I feel like Janet, we need more all arounders of playing all types of games. And Sarah is awesome, but she's a little bit more of like sniper shot. Like, I will nail this content. Sure. Um, and so, yeah, that w- those were the weird discussions. Then it was like, okay, we can afford to bring Sarah on to be this streaming compatriot or whatever we called her where she just streamed on <laughs> right. Twitch for a while and I was like what are we doing like okay of course just jump on in you know yeah um, so yeah that's that's that full saga so yeah it had a wild influence on us uh, and kind of reshaped it but again it's just kind of that adversity of the pandemic and then it turns out if you're going through that and you have to problem solve and puzzle solve it's like okay there's a way to make it better for everybody yeah Maybe not the world overall after the pandemic, but, you know, <laughs> for the content. Um, Aging Poorly says, uh, Hanson, um, what are, and everybody else as well, uh, what's the high point and low point for MinMax as a company over five years? Tough. Tough. Uh, I think, for me, the high points are always the game of the year. Um, really? Discussions, the two tens. Yes. Yeah. I always enjoy those. I'm always amazed and thankful when we finish them, no shade to any of our previous jobs, but we, <laughs> I walk away from them feeling happy right? and feeling like that was great. I, I don't have any grudges that I'm going to be thinking about at three in the morning. Uh-huh. I feel like I've been heard mm-hmm. and, and it feels like we came to a consensus that we're all happy with. And, and we have the pissy zone. <clears throat> Yes. And we do uh, have the pissy zone, which is very therapeutic. Imagine if right. the pissy zone was just seven hours and ec- more extreme and <laughs> wasted time because it wasn't aired for the community to enjoy. And that's what previous discussions for Cody were like in our Full-time lives. Full-time pissy zone. It was yeah. so brutal. Well, and it, and it was also like, to be, to be fair to the Game Informer discussions. We never said Game Informer. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but but like, those, those discussions happened... Right before our biggest and like shortest deadline, yeah. where, where oh, we okay. had to run out and then write an entire issue, so everybody's already in the pissy zone to begin with. Sure, right, right. Uh, during those ones, but obviously our lowest point was a giant crossword puzzle, <laughs> <laughs> or a Scrabble, Scrabble. Scrabble sorry, yeah. yes. don't look yeah. it up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah I mean, high point. Uh, there's a lot. It's like it's weird when things will hit me out of the blue for like, oh, that that lands for just really sinking home like where min max is at and like the charity streams obviously are a big one like that's mm. that's an easy one the community meetups also that vibe was like whoa because the thing is that's really bizarre is like for the most part me trying to stay in the center of the min max hurricane and it's probably poor terminology the big twirly storm yeah the min, the min max twister twisters I don't know. It's different. Like the me. point Somebody is, help it. <laughs> just be, trying to be at the center of things like, okay, air traffic controller, like what's going on here? I think I have a pretty good idea of what we've done over the last five years. And then there's just moments of just like, oh, it, sometimes it's content that I'm not associated with. And it's like, this is so much better than I thought it was going to be. Like this rules. And just being surprised by an outlet that I started is a really weird feeling. And like, mm-hmm. it comes up in, in odd places of, yeah, content that I'm not on. I just like, oh my God, I love this so much. I'm so glad that this exists. Um, and then, like community meetups is another one where it's like, oh, there are like people that talk about MinMax in a way that's like just it blows my mind. And not that they're like, this is the best thing of all time, but just talking about like, oh, I've made friends through MinMax and I've done this through MinMax and it's changed my life in this way. It's like, oh, you could not hold it all in your head if you tried. You know, and I get a little bit of that from messaging people on Patreon. I mean, at this point, I've sent thousands and thousands and thousands of messages on Patreon and talked to all new supporters and stuff. And like, that's a little window into just, we're used to the names in the Discord, but that's just barely tip of the iceberg. There are so many people out there who's like, oh, I watch New Show Plus every week with my daughter. And it's like, just that type of weird stuff. It's like, you cannot imagine it. And so... Until this week with Giant Scrabble. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? Sorry. It was all in the exit survey for Patreon. Is really <laughs> right. um, no, and so like, community meetups are a big one uh, for that. And then another one early on that I know I've talked about before, but it was when we're doing the deepest dive on 
Halo. And we're like, oh, we'll play Halo multiplayer. We'll have an episode talking about Halo 1's multiplayer. And so we jumped in and the community just had like some private matches of them all playing Halo 1 multiplayer. And I don't know if you guys have this feeling too, but I had that feeling there that I've had so many times at the meetup of just like, whoa, like everybody in the community who's playing this is so nice and they're all super funny and super smart. And it's just like this wild humbling. of was like, oh my God. Okay, these people are forming real friendships out there. You know, on the parasocial front, I always want to remind people, we're friendly towards everybody. We're not your friends. <laughs> but people in the community are becoming friends. And that's so sweet. And just being in a Halo session like that, I'm just like, it's a private game of everybody being silly and just realizing like, I'm the 12th funniest person in this uh, lobby right now. It's like, that is amazing. And even like community meetups, just like these people know so much more about games than I do. Like it's it's mind boggling out there. Uh, so that that's always a big one. Um, and then another one that hit me shockingly hard. And I, <laughs> I believe this happened. There's moments of like, did this really happen? But just yesterday, uh, yeah, yesterday I was biking in the morning and uh, biking on Minnehaha along the along the river there, um, and there's just a woman walking who I'd never seen before. I'd never been to a community meetup, as far as I remember. And she's just walking by. And she's wearing a gray sweater, and she, it's just a big Minmax logo on it. <laughs> and she's just walking by, and so I biked by and saw it, and I was like, "What?" And I just go, "I like your shirt," and then kept biking. <laughs> and then in a moment of like, "Should I stop?" I'm like, "That's weird. I'm just gonna keep going." But it's just like that moment. It's like I am out in the wild in Minneapolis. Yeah. Like yeah. that is such a wild thing to what see. What you did was normal. That was a normal experience. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I got. It. She had probably just put on her boyfriend's hoodie or something. Oh, maybe. Honestly, that was the question because I was talking sure. to my wife about it. She's like, "Of course, you should have stopped and talked to her." I'm like, "No, there's no. I don't know what that would have been like." And then if she just slipped on her boyfriend's hoodie because it was cold out and just somebody stopped, like, uh, still though, you would have been feeding her like what a thing to make your boyfriend <laughs> jealous with. That's, That's true. true. That's true. By the way, I I got recognized recently at Barnes and Noble. Uh, I was with my daughter and. Uh, they they were very like hey Kyle from Midmax how's it going Whoa. and I was like oh this, I was like hi this is great and and uh, shout out to that person because like my daughter was like blown away she nice. was like in the oh, car she was like wow. whoa you someone recognize you I, when that happens like I, I don't I like feel like I reacted poorly to that because like I didn't know you probably did yeah. what to do I was like oh thanks cool but I was you like I, here's there. what you do you say hey how'd you find us what kind of content you oh, want in the future good. well the other <laughs> thing <laughs> that's it you're set I know but the other the other thing because it feels like a jerk move to me but it's like I kind of want to be like do you want to take a picture like is that cool right, like do right. I do I open mm. that up like I want to talk to you and I want to have a conversation but I, this this person in particular I feel like they wanted to very quickly say hello and not bother me but I just want to make clear like you, I'm I'm happy to talk to you I will I'll take a picture bother with him you as much as you go. want <laughs> <laughs> yeah bother me but I just I felt like I didn't know what to do in that situation I felt bad afterward it even though so my sweet. daughter you know thought I was very cool yeah I was at the uh, I went to Pete Holmes's show the comedian here in mm -hmm. Minneapolis just last week I guess it was um, and as I was like sitting down in the crowd I heard Ben Hansen. I was like what is going on and it was somebody from the Midnight's community uh, Hunter oh, cool. who had been at a couple community meetups like oh my god hey nice and I tried to convince him again not to get a Min Max logo tattoo. I still think it's a bad idea. Um, <laughs> do it. Yeah. Don't do it, please. Do it. Please don't do it. Um, but the other thing is, uh, another one that hits me hard is like when developers mention mm -hmm. Min Max. And we talked about it not too long ago. But yeah. when like, you know, the director of Final Fantasy VII Remake and Rebirth was like, oh, Min Max. I want a Min Max interview. It's like, what? Or John Romero and Jordan Mechner, when they reached out, like, we want to talk about game history. And we knew that Min Max was the place to go. It's like, well, maybe there's a little... Maybe IGN and GameSpot said no, but knowing that, like, oh, we're a thing <laughs> that they're referencing, like, like these legends. Like, yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, surely we were third. You know. Well, it's still just like that's the uh, wild thing of like, oh, these these developers out there. See, so, yeah, so it's like, yeah, that's a, cool. A, a thing, yeah, we're a thing. I, we're a thing. Um, let's see. Oh, Haley Fax, Haley McLean, watching us the backstage past year says, "I forgot to tell you, Ben, but when I gave my talk in Vancouver, three different people came up afterwards and said they were Min Max fans. And one even said he came specifically because he was a Min Max fan. Awesome. That's sweet." Um, she says, I was already gonna say for high points, bringing Haley on, who is like an oh old friend God. we met doing a Game Informer internship in 2016, and now we like get to hang out more than ever online. And maybe specifically the Hitman explaining thing, where she was in town for Extra Life, mm. and uh, the last night she was here, we did a a stream from my place playing Hitman, which is my favorite, one of my favorite pieces of gameplay content I've done. Yeah. So, and she's been so great. It's crazy. So to, mm -hmm. It's amazing. To the point that it's embarrassing that I didn't push for Haley earlier. Right. <laughs> you know, like what the hell were we thinking? It's insane. And I talked about this with Charles Hart during SGF, but like the amazing thing about Haley and Haley, you can tune out please, um, is like 
she's great. It's so wild. We, I saw a post on Reddit not too long ago where someone in just a comment was talking about Min Max, and they're like, Min Max's core crew is wild. They're like, <laughs> there's someone who knows uh, game translation who lived in Japan. There's a video game IP lawyer. There's Kelsey Liu, the historian, and she runs several games. Just running through like everybody, and it's like all. And there's the... five talentless dudes. <laughs> that was the subtext. <laughs> that was the subtext. Um, but uh, oh yeah, so but I was talking about. Haley with Charles Hart about just like yeah she it's wild to have that much knowledge and she plays so much and is so great and so fun but like the secret skill of Haley is like she's the greatest support unit ever because she makes everybody else feel good everyone mm-hmm. wants to do stuff with her which <laughs> is something that's like an unspoken skill but like if you get to be on bonus pod or do a gameplay stream with Haley I feel like everybody in the crew would be delighted to do that and I'm true. like that's a really mm-hmm. rare gift for somebody to have in the crew normally it's like oh, another podcast with Jeff. Right. Like, yeah, I was idea. talking about Catwoman. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then low point, uh, you know, not not too many. A couple moments of just like, oh, this sucks. Paternity leave. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> that time I texted you when you were trying to get engaged to your wife to for to <gasps> troubleshoot. <laughs> I forgot. About, yeah, you're trying oh, to do a Nintendo. It was yeah, like, it was an Nintendo Direct Reaction yeah. stream. I was like, Kyle, I have a ring in my pocket. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, you ring for adventure. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was that was rough. No, it's like you know, Haley. Another reason Haley's been really helpful. And shout out to the mods in the Discord. But that that's been a stressful thing. It's like the Discord's great. A lot of work from the mods. You know present and past um to to improve the discord and make it even better uh but that feeling of just like i'm trying to be the air traffic controller from min max do all this stuff and then the idea of like what's this i have to sort through if this person's really being a s head or just a little snarky like just waves of mm-hmm. like that's right. the level of like i can't and like having haley be run as a community manager of like okay just please i need some help in this arena like it's just been a godsend because that was just emotionally really tough to be like okay what is this dispute that's going back in this channel and it's too much for one brain to hold yeah textbook like you know doesn't it doesn't have it on the resume but it's clearly like a people person and yes. it's good at navigating those types of situations yep absolutely and then a couple tough times with jeff i'm uh not putting you down <laughs> but i remember like again i've talked about it before but i've had several not that Jeff has done anything wrong, but like I remember specifically a low point early on is all of us, but Jeff the most vocal in this context, like arguing about ad money. And that was another moment where I was like, I felt so bad after that. Do you remember this? Do you remember those discussions in my old living room? <laughs> no. Okay. Hmm. And then just anything to deal with like money with MinMax when we were talking about it and arguing about it in some way, it's like, God, this feels terrible. Stressful. And Jeff was very doing a great job of like standing his ground. I mean, the <clears> idea was sponsorships on the podcast does that money go directly to the f- four of us who started uh, out or does it go into the min max bank account like that was the debate mm. and it was it was just like one of those debates where afterwards, was like god did we have to argue about i've never argued with jeff about money normally it's just the board game go or something yeah. so like to have this new phase of our friendship rules. of like we have to argue <clears throat> for 40 minutes about there there have worth, been there like, have been some some contract discussions that yeah i promise you i hate them as much as you do <laughs> so and it's brutal. so it's so weird yeah but, yeah but yeah it's that you know like and those are growing pains that yeah we were you were trying to figure out uh stuff for the company and i was figuring out totally my position and i feel like it all it's all gotten better since yes then, so yes, yes. I, I to agree. the point where i don't even remember that one. really <laughs> oh go. god i remember that so much that was just a knife to my heart <laughs> uh, let's see victor garcia you remember that one kyle no, was I there for this one? <laughs> yeah. You were kind of there, facing the wall, Blair Witch style, but... Yeah. There, there was, <laughs> me avoiding conflict? <laughs> yeah, I was interested. I don't know if that's me. <laughs> yeah, there was a, a depressing pizza party that oh, I remember you that, yeah. and me and Surreal went on. I remember that. When we were talking oh. about first contract stuff. Yeah. That was probably overflow into, into that. Yeah. It was like trying to figure out... What is Min Max for us? Yeah, right. right. Yeah, because yeah. yes. it was it was one. a tough balance to be like okay, because I think early on, <laughs> and this is really behind the scenes. So I apologize. But early on, it's like okay, it's the income coming in. It's a pie chart. And it's like we can split this up. This will be great. But then more and more, it was like we need to look to the future. We should probably bring on more people. Like we need to, we need to carve this pie chart differently. Yeah, mm-hmm. and make it slightly less generous to the starting crew so that we can plan for the future and bring in more people and it was like that's a really tough conversation to have yeah you know 
I'm glad we did it, and I hope everyone's in a good spot. Yeah, but it was like, it, again. it was tough to be yeah. like, here's why you should get a smaller percent of the Patreon. You yeah, know, it's like, I mean, it's a it, it was it was like we hadn't like the idea of being contract workers, right. And kind of like you you come to it and and be involved with it. It like there's much more breathing room now in the budget, anyway. So so it's 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 much easier to like look at it as okay i'm going to there there was a point where i made peace with it of like okay this is this is how much we're going to get and i should be doing the amount of work that i feel yes. is is okay with that right. and and worry much less and i've been much happier being like and and realizing how much goes through your head and how much planning that you have to do all the business it was like, well, okay, I'm not going to worry about any of that then, and I'm just going to do. I'm going to focus on the content that I'm doing and what makes sense for what I'm getting paid, and that that has made me certainly uh, much happier. Yeah, but hopefully, also with the premise of hopefully, I'm communicating enough that if you feel like this is effed, like this is this is not yeah. feeling good, like you know, hopefully, people feel very eager to speak up. Is that the best way to phrase it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. It still makes you very uncomfortable. It's very yes. uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah, you don't like you. You are the boss, Ben, but I know how much you hate acknowledging it. But it's, mm. uh, you are don't okay. Deny it. But contractor is a better <laughs> phrase if you want to be clinical about it. Um, let's see. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, of course. Oh, uh, Kevin Kennedy says for the five year anniversary, I decided to go back and play a really old Deepest Dive and landed on Chrono Trigger, which was the second ever Deepest Dive. Nice, but I. It always makes me laugh because I remember the pitch video for the Deepest Dive and Chrono Trigger. You can go back and look for it on our channel. But it was me in January of 2020 being like, life is stressful. The world's in a rough spot. Let's pull that ripcord and play the most delightful game ever, <laughs> Chrono Trigger. And I had no idea how rough 2020 was going to be. So it was like in oh, January boy. before anything truly bad was happening in the States, at least. That was the idea. So anyways, um, they said they never played it before. I just finished up part one up until the end of time, which was a stopping point for the Deepest Dive and Chrono Trigger. Mm -hmm. It's funny to hear Kyle play this on iOS <laughs> right. and Serial and Jeffum busted what out their... What a hilarious bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Serial and Jeffum busted out their DSs to play Chrono Trigger for the Deepest Dive there. Uh, Five years later, I'm playing on the Steam Deck and it's a no brainer it's a luxury y'all didn't have can you imagine if we it's all true. were playing on steam deck that would have been the way to go man um they say anyways after five years of deepest dives um what has been your favorite deepest dive to date romantically <laughs> <laughs> it's I, yeah for me it's rebirth from yeah. just this year which is nice that it's an, a mm -hmm. recent one uh i had so much fun doing that and like the fact that we got to do it in the studio and kind of like basically close out that old studio with that was just like and scheduling wise getting everybody I don't want to talk about it. Is it getting everybody to play this 100 hour game when Grant had a baby ready to pop and Ronnie was moving and still we did that it's like oh my god mm -hmm. I, I feel so good about that and then Anna came in at the end it was so fun and Ross was a champion like it was it was perfect other yeah. than you guys not being there it was perfect yeah, that was <laughs> I mean Chrono Trigger is a good one I mean yeah. that's on top of mind now because it was brought up but I also I, I even though I think ultimately Chrono Cross I think I, I didn't love that game I don't know if I really like if that came across Nobody's perfect, in yeah. the deepest dive, but like the further I got away from it, I was like, ah, it just didn't really click with me. And I think doing a deepest dive of a game I'd always meant to go back to and then like playing it and and kind of like having a weird relationship with it, I think led to like a good deepest dive. So I actually am yeah. like fond of that one. Hmm. And it was so nice to have a Rebecca Valentine on that oh, one. Oh yeah, just like, like everything about that, that game, game and, and knew it yeah. really well. Yeah. And like I missed like entire like huge important like characters, characters. moments and stuff. How like did that? you miss a character in Chrono Cross, dude? What's wrong with you? I don't know. I was thinking uh yeah yeah i've had that a couple times of like cyberpunk i shouldn't have been on that deepest dive. <laughs> <laughs> that's not my genre what was i thinking there um i was gonna say cyberpunk as one of yeah one of my favorite i enjoyed that one i enjoyed last of us 2 that was interesting i'm so glad because like the game's fascinating and i'm so glad that we have like a time capsule yes. of like what was it like there's i i would argue that like during the time that game came out, there's probably one of the best like archives of people actually discussing in depth everything about that mm -hmm. game. Like as of right now, in 2020, this is what it feels like to play this. I'm really happy mm -hmm. that it exists. Yeah. Um, and, uh, one of my favorites too, let me cut you off, Jeff. Um, um <laughs> is uh <laughs> yeah, counter you like Batman. No, but <laughs> Arkham Asylum is one of my favorites too. Yeah. Like with Brandon Jones. I thought that one was so fun. That was a great choice. Yeah. Sorry, Jeff, you're gonna say. Uh no, in in terms of time capsule, uh the cyberpunk one stood out as well because right. yeah sure it like i feel like it hadn't 
at least completely exploded before or like as we were doing it i know or, or like or like at it least mess, it, but... it, it hadn't like you know become kind of solidified as like this is the biggest disaster ever as we were playing <laughs> yeah. it and there was just a lot of us being like yeah i'm i'm having fun like it it's it's crashed like once or twice in like the 60 <laughs> hours I've been playing. I don't know what to tell you. Like, what? yeah, we were almost all playing on PC, which is the one platform that was pretty fine. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I think Alan Wake 2 for me. I felt yeah, like I loved that, that game the whole way through and had so much I was excited to say about it every time I showed up for that. And the dynamic is so good. You're like, yeah, Sarah being so <laughs> yes. damn funny and Haley just like yes. falling so in love with that. I was like, yeah, the perfect, perfect crew for them. Yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, Justin Chen writes in simple question other than money made. What do y'all consider success for MinMax? That's an interesting question. Um, yeah, it, uh, for me, it's creating a model that other people can use structurally, right? Mm. Of just a sustainable games media outlet. Like, I, it's, I feel really lucky that in a time where every media outlet is going down in flames, like, I feel optimistic about the future of MinMax, and hopefully everybody in the crew is, is feeling good. Um, and so it is a funky, funky thing, but just, yeah, I, that is a measure of success. I'm just like, Hey, here's a model that works games media. If someone else wants to be full time and, and do, you know, a lot of the editing work until hopefully we can get enough money and then bring Leo on to help out with editing and Charles Hart can help Leo. out with editing and stuff like that. Not, not Leo busy. specifically, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but just that kind of odd structure of like part time from a lot of people. Yeah. You can make an outlet that hopefully does cool stuff. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Transparency is an important part of that then for yeah. people seeing what the model really is and exactly what yeah monetary right. success looks like for this model. Yeah. And every once in a while, like I, I'm still just so thankful that, yeah, we can have an outlet that by and large, not by and large, where I like, I mean, it's pretty, I'm in a very lucky position of like, I like the stuff that we do, you know? It's like, <laughs> yeah. if he's like, why is everything on the SpinMax channel my taste? It's like, oh, I see. Because yeah. I'm ramming it down people's Most throats. of it seems to be pretty good. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There, there's this giant scrabble every once in a while, but... Yeah, there's not, there's not a lot of compromise in terms of the right. content that we make. or or And there's not a lot of like, well, we, we need to do this because it's going to be... Because that's what, pe that's what people want. We, we got we to gotta do, you know... A Call of Duty deep dive because yeah because that's going to do good numbers. It's which, a good question. Like the but, idea of like mm. trying to think maybe for talking about some deepest dives of like well this one will do better numbers wise. That's why we gravitated more towards the newer games and older. But then again, it's like hopefully it's always a newer game that we want to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's been a while. I feel like since we had the conversation of like we should do this for the numbers. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. If yeah. we, I mean, maybe yeah. early on for like tabletop review stuff. But yeah. then I was like, okay, and, those numbers aren't really churning out and maybe not. And and even even like when you bring stuff up, you bring it up to the group and no one else is sitting there being like, well, the numbers, we got to think about the numbers. It's right. like, I don't want to do that. And then we don't do it. And then we don't do <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Even like, you know, max spoilers like, oh, we got to cover all this Marvel stuff. And it's like, how oh, the numbers wise that's not that's not bringing anything home mm. like we're better yeah. off we're better off with you know sarah running a lemonade stand that would do eight times the numbers that covering Beetle guardians Juice, of the galaxy is three yeah or Beetle <laughs> Juice, Beetle Juice, you know it's like it's just such a weird thing yeah. that we built up but yeah I, I do i'm so thankful that it's just like we have a model that doesn't rely on us cranking out uh dog s of just okay what's this press release let me just regurgitate that okay what's this okay hey look at this just we're not that mm -hmm. attention grabby you know everyone's told me for a thumbnail we'll do a reaction phase for reaction stream but <laughs> yeah, yeah we're not we're not above it <laughs> well <laughs> kind of like, like, hey, <laughs> yeah if we're doing a reaction stream you gotta have reactions in the yeah. thumbnail you know but hopefully we're <laughs> yeah. not obnoxious about it and yeah. and we're not we're not looking at a bottom line and like right tugging at our collars and thinking like, That's well, Jesus, job. what do, what do <laughs> right. we what do we have to do in order to get people to pay us money? Right. Because that's the that's the wildest Other thing. Other than the lemonade stand. Other than the lemonade <laughs> yeah. stand, yeah. Um, that's the wildest thing is like messaging people. This has been a big revelation of like messaging everybody on Patreon. By and large, the reason people say they support us is like, I just like the vibes. Uh, just it's a positive outlet, and I want to support that. It's like how do you, that's amazing, but it's really telling that it's not a matter of like. When you did the spoiler cast for that film, right. that's what turned me around. It's like, it's mm -hmm. it's just a general vibe more than it's any specific thing, which is something I don't think I would have accounted for yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. And you have figured out how to monetize vibes. 
<laughs> yeah, have you seen okay. Patreon.com slash MainMax? Okay. That's, that's the idea. Based business model. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> uh, Nick LaPole writes in and says, I loved your record shop recently. I loaded up Florence the Machine based on Dan Riker's recommendation and was not disappointed. All right. But I saw that one and I was like, oh, I wonder if that's the album he got me. But I'm still, I'm very glad he got me that one. Mm. Um, it got me thinking about my own relationship with music and how it's evolved slash devolved over time. I've been making a more deliberate effort listening to whole albums instead of singles. And honestly, it's a great feeling. Add CDs to the mix and I suddenly feel much more in sync with the bands <laughs> I say I love so much. Uh, streaming just doesn't quite compare. Two questions. Hmm. Or one question, have you ever experienced, <laughs> I turn the second question, have you ever experienced a revelation like that in your own entertainment habits? Revelations in your entertainment habits. I've really recently, I've been, I've really had a big uh, awakening um, in the trying to keep track of the way I think about things and the way I naturally kind of go towards like if, I, if I'm picturing an idea or an insight or something I immediately picture like who am I sharing this with I picture the other person and having a conversation with them like mm-hmm. I want to share this with my partner I want to share this with my best friend or even I want to talk about this on MinMax or something like oh I kind of just as a way of fleshing out the thought thinking about it as a conversation or something which is fine and it's like it's helpful to have that you know help you refine it right of like here's how it would be understandable to somebody else mm. but I've really been realizing like is that because I don't do anything for myself that is not for some mm. kind of external reward or external, you know, there's not a place f- for it. But what's, how do you, what does that look like to enjoy stuff only for you to that level, to a level that's like as intellectually engaging as doing it, as talking about it with somebody? That's what I can't figure out. Or writing in about the process it? of figuring out yeah. maybe writing about it or just having a different hobby that's not like games I'm coming up with a take to share on MinMax movies I'm coming up with a take to post on Letterboxd you know it's like everything I do has this kind of place in my life mm-hmm. and I'm like what would a what would it be like for me to have a hobby that I did not make a big deal out of I did not like I don't go right. start a new hobby and do a better quest video about it you know like what if yes. I'm not, it's truly just for me and my own personal journey yeah i've I've been grappling with that too lately Hmm. like like i've been i haven't started yet which is i embarrassing but like one one thing i was like oh i i will take up drums again you know i need to play drums like for me exclusively you know um but it's just the new show plus drumming show is never gonna happen that i've been talking about for a year and a half (laughs) no we can still do that but like (laughs) practicing and stuff and like and like taking it like acknowledging it as a hobby that i do explicitly for me only is like something that i've struggled with honestly yeah you know yeah, yeah. especially drumming and I, yeah i mean we do so many things here it's like yeah it could just be a drumming show yeah right and that can help me do it faster like yep a better yep. reason to do it is having this external thing but it's it's like i feel out of practice for doing things for reasons besides that right yeah that's tough so what's your conclusion how do you do it um i'm gonna try to find something that has nothing to do with anything else I do, and not tell people about it. Mm-hmm. So don't yes. expect any follow-ups. <laughs> so it'll be a secret. <laughs> yeah, it's it's barely related, but like uh, a, a friend of mine named Rory, who I respect so much, I'm gonna go ahead and out him here on a specific thing. But like, he has got really into running, and he uh, ran the Superior Hiking Trail up near Duluth, which is just huge. I don't know how freaking long it is. It's crazy long, and I love it. He just went and did that by himself. Just trained for it. Went and did it. And just never bragged about it, never posted it on any social media. <laughs> like, I really, had to... I don't think it happened then, Ben. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> no, it was like that level of just like, that is, I love that type of person so much. Just but like, he told sure. you about it. Yeah, he insisted. No, I probably was honestly me prodding of just no. kind of like, hey, you mentioned that a while ago. Whatever happened no, with that? I, I know I'm joking, but it's admirable, like genuinely. Yeah. For sure. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. We got uh, ooh, Philly Eat Steaks says, "Just want to let you know that there were no missed joke opportunities last week. You got them all. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> wow, nice. Wow. All the time." Uh, Corey S says, "Can stealth be the highlight of an action game?" I had a dream last night no. that I was doing stealth in a new Spider-Man game. It was a fun or not? It was awesome. <laughs> really? Yeah. It can be awesome. You know, the current Spider-Man games have stealth in them. Right. And it's not that awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I liked the stealth, like, as Spider-Man, you know? That's yeah. what the dream was. Uh, I, I can't prove that, but it so, was. You know, the Arkham games, the stealth stuff is pr- maybe the most satisfying. Like, mm-hmm. it makes you feel the most like Batman. Yeah. But, I, yeah, to call it the highlight of the game, I'm, I'm not sure if I... 
would mm. call it that. But I liked it. It's good. I didn't dread it. It wasn't like the section of the game is like, oh, here comes the stealth section. It's like, oh, I'm going to go full Batman mode. You yeah. know? Leo, when I saw that question, I thought of Hitman, which is a bit of a different kind of stealth, but... Highlight of an action game? Is that the question? Yeah. Stealth is the highlight of an action game. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, it's... I would still consider it an action game, but you you spend the most, like, the your majority of your goal in that game is to avoid getting into any action mm-hmm. by being... It's, it's not like I'm sneaking around in shadows, although I guess sometimes you do, but, like, the whole uniform system and all of those things, like, it's it always feels good when you get the Silent Assassin award in the old games where it's like... I only killed one person and I used one bullet to do it. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. And the stealth like actually sneaking around where you're going to get caught in the back alleys, that's kind of a rare part of it between getting the costumes and between being mm-hmm. out in the open where it doesn't matter what you're doing. Uh, Luca Alberti says, Hello crew. To celebrate the fifth anniversary of MinMax, I'm here to remind you of the time that Tim Schafer asked Ben Hansen to stop uh, doing so much Psych Odyssey content. <laughs> it was truly a remarkable feat. <laughs> I stand with you, Ben. It's still the greatest work of art of all time. Cheers, folks, and here's to five more years. Thank you, Luca. I just got the Blu-ray of Psych Odyssey, which has the MinMax interview on it. Nice. Kind of cool. Yeah. Nice. Um, Adam Castellanos wrote in, said, In honor of MinMax's fifth anniversary, I wanted to ask everyone, if y'all could do any podcast or show on MinMax and given all creative freedom to do so, what would y'all want to do? Here's another five years, says Adam. Does anybody feel like they don't have the freedom to do whatever they want to do? This know, is an alarming a, fact. No, sir. Yeah, that's the... <laughs> I, I, I think I've even talked to you about wanting to do like an akira Focus podcast once. But, right. But it's oh. like you... It's not like you were, you were like, great, yeah, when you do it. Right. <laughs> you know? The, the yeah, trick right. to doing it is yeah. doing it. Yeah. <laughs> I talked to Reese about uh, like doing a read-through with the manga, um, and that's as far as it got. Right. Someday. Uh, Sarah watching us live said, did, it, did Ben put this question in himself? How dare you, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to take notes and pressure you in the next meeting to do these things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're, no, you're, you've always been very encouraging of like, is there anything passionate people want to do that we're not doing, and how do we make that happen? And then it comes down to people are interested in doing things but don't have the time to spare. It's always just scheduling difficulties for yep. a lot of this stuff. Jeff, yeah. was it board game stuff? No. Oh. I I put I put it it wouldn't be a thing that we would do on Minmax, but the reason Uh-oh. I always think about it is I want I would love to do a politics podcast with yeah. you and Jeff Cork. It's, yeah. it's 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 the yeah. America channel of just You like, can't talk about the America yeah, ever since Game Informer, we've had a secret Slack channel called America, and Jeff Cork and Jeff and I just <laughs> unload every day. All the time. <laughs> I and would had, love that. Podcast. Yeah, we've had I many know. tense. Uh, Jeff and didn't take kindly to a conversation recently. We had so <laughs> yeah, it's probably good right I, now. It's probably pretty quiet. It's, it's right really now, chill. Right? So I was thinking like, oh, it, like it's such it's such a canvas, but it's like, is the way to do it is to put it in a new show plus poll? Like we just <laughs> unload just, politically. It's like, there's no upside. No, there's, no, no upside. There, there's not. And and that and that's why it's the perfect answer for if you if you could have a magic genie that would give you a budget and you could do anything that you want that you right. feel like you can't do it. That would be it. Wow. Muzzled, yeah. this fella. Muzzled, yeah. <laughs> Scared. It's <laughs> true. Um, I have Jawar Hello said stealth and shadow of war. I feel like that is the correct answer for a stealth and an action oh, game. Because yeah, it's just correct. once in a while and getting a stealth kill on a captain yeah, yeah, feels yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Lachlan Belford says, congrats on five years. Thank you, Lachlan. Uh, I haven't commented or participated directly in too much MinMax stuff, but I've been listening every week since the beginning. And it's been great to see y'all grow. Uh, y'all grow. Five years ago, I was in a pretty low place, but since then, I decided to go to grad school for game design. I got in, graduated, and am now in my second year of teaching game development at a state university. Your cool. ethos of getting better has been a small but consistently helpful motivator for me throughout the entire process, and I wanted to sincerely say thank you. Thank you, Lachlan. Very sweet. Very sweet. Yeah. Joshua H., congrats on five years. Five What's years. a way you've best bettered yourself in the last five years? Best bettered. Best bettered. Be best bettered. Uh, best bettered? My wife and I, we've dramatically changed our diet over the course of the last five years. Oh. Of just like cooking more and healthier. And uh, and I feel it's weird. It's like uh, this year, I feel like both of us have... Su- because that kind of thing takes so long to make a difference, I feel like. It's mm-hmm. like if you actually change your diet significantly and change what you're eating and stuff. Like you don't... It took us so long to feel the effects. But this year, I feel like... We're both losing a lot of weight, and it like I just feel better, and it's like made a 
<laughs> I, have a I, can I can drink a Coke. <laughs> That's right. That's I'm not trying to like torture myself. He but, walked uh, into my house and he asked if I had any extra lard. Which yeah. I thought was weird. <laughs> but like I got into cooking from the dipping sticks. I got into cooking a lot and like I but I was still cooking bad food, if that makes sense, right? Mm. But like in the last like three, four years, like I now all the meals I cook are like all pretty good. You know? Yeah. And yeah. It makes a difference. Turns That's out. Right. I love it. Learning how to be a, a handy fix it dad. Ooh. Yeah. Like I, I like yeah. I, I have done a lot of house projects. Um, over the past couple of years and now my kid it feels like my kid brings me a broken toy like once a day it's like yep I'll take it apart and try and put it back together in a way that you can play with it again and that's sweet and eventually I'll have to do that for his heart oh prom night sure I don't know <laughs> That's what we think. Patrick G writes in and says, "Congrats on five years." Also, can we get a couch build update from Jeffum? It's been way too long. Wow, good segue. <laughs> Great timing. As soon as I leave here, <laughs> I'm going home, and my brother's coming over, and we are finishing the second half of that couch. Really? Yes. Oh, nice. So, and I'm not going to make content out of it. Don't do it. So, nice. I wouldn't it's dream just of for, it. It's just for me. That's right. <laughs> and my wife's asses. Okay. All right, buddy. <laughs> Sit on. But you post so a picture in, Polit- in America channel. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And now we yeah. know both your asses are so warm. That's an image I won't get out of my head. That is true. <laughs> uh, did you want to answer that one, Leo? Sorry, the last one about five-year betterment. Um, the thing that comes to mind is being more compassionate to myself. To yourself. Uh, yeah. Self-compassion, it's called. I feel like it's been the key to everything. Like, so many habits I had for so long that I would just try to fix by beating myself up. And I'm like, if I'm the maximum level of mad at myself for doing this thing I promised myself I wouldn't do, then that'll make me change it if I get the most frustrated. But it really Mm -hmm. unlocks it to be like, I understand why I did that. Here's the factors that went into it. Here's why I believe I can do better and do it looking at it that way, you know? Yeah. I don't know. This is, there's probably bigger and better stuff. It's something that, I don't know. Like, yeah, I've had, I feel good about you know, over the last couple of years, having a couple, like, I think, honestly, biking's been a big thing. I'm just having a lot of time to think on those trails. And mm-hmm. just, I've had a couple epiphanies while biking of, like, oh, this is why I'm this way. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. okay, family dynamics affecting me this way. It's, like, just kind of interrogating yourself. And it's, it's nice that even in my late 30s, I have moments of, like, ah, got it, got it. Totally. Um, but, I don't know, just a small thing recently is, and this is, I apologize for being so naive, but just, like, I am not expressive enough uh, in some ways for just like being complimentary, you Hmm. know, but just realizing like, why, if I have a nice thought, why am I not saying the nice thought? I certainly talk enough and just having those (laughs) little moments of like, I've had caught myself of just like, oh, my wife's looking hot today. And, but why would I ever keep that to myself? Right. Like, what a stupid <laughs> idea. And so just, you know, reminding yourself, like, oh, people like these things. You gotta, you gotta, don't chamber that, you know? I just struggle like, with that too. Or just like, you know, uh, you know, um, you know, I had a great weekend uh, with my family. Uh, and just like going back to my parents' place with the kid. And it was like, uh, so it was really like sweet. Cause you got to like, oh, explore the woods that I grew up in and stuff like that. And just having the moment, just like just being able, to like, okay, really, thank you guys. Like, this is, I'm so thankful that this house exists, and you all have, you know, kept this family intact, and just everything. It's been amazing. For sure, I, I don't know what that comes from. That like, I don't want to do this. What right. if people don't want to be complimented? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> because yeah, when you're like the person who says, "Let's stop for a second, and I'll be really grateful for this," like, people like that. That's it. Yourself included. That's it. Um, let's see. Cax writes in, classic Cax, they say, what's a time you where you laughed when you shouldn't have? My brother-in-law helps me with car problems, but something about him that makes me laugh uncontrollably and I feel so guilty. <laughs> Wait, you just, as he's helping you with car problems, you just laugh at him? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they say, am I a bad person? Possibly, but yeah. So a time where you laughed when you shouldn't have laughed. I, I think I filmed this because I had a specific story. I had a little cousin who showed me, excitedly showed me his class picture. Mm. You know, all the kids oh, no. all the kids were like you know normal picture normal uh, picture face but then he was in the corner making the most absurd like ridiculous idiotic <laughs> face and I burst out laughing <laughs> and he I, he was probably like five or six or something and he took it very like he w- was crying because oh, I was no. laughing at the picture so much and I felt terrible and my my mom came and she was like why would you do that to your little cousin that was so mean 
And I was like, I'm sorry, I don't know what happened. And then like a couple hours later, my mom was like, by the way, I finally looked at that picture and I uh, I completely understand why you <laughs> burst out <laughs> laughing. Uh, but I just felt, I still felt bad over making this little five-year-old kid just sob because I thought he looked so funny in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Connor. Yes? <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know what that was. Sorry. Uh, I've, I've had a couple, my wife and I both have had a couple moments with the kid where he mm. does something inappropriate mm -hmm. and your and your first initial impression is to just laugh and like he he has gotten like ev he's done it a couple times where he'll get exasperated about something and he'll just go jesus christ <laughs> and, I like, and, and i laughed the first time i was like no no don't don't say that though buddy and then made like the mental note of like okay i have to watch because that one that one came from me <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> have to watch those now but uh let's see beefcake writes and says wow five years old seems like just yesterday min max was learning to walk that's right mm. anyways i still think about kyle hanging upside down in the bathroom crapping it's probably my favorite question <laughs> i've sent in yes <laughs> i do not remember this at all don't yes, be naive you do. don't be naive uh bob Yule says congrats <laughs> on five years here's to here's to five more and not a day more than that I always wanted to know, how does this whole thing operate? I'll take my answer <laughs> off the air. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Thank you for making this possible. That's good. Um, let's see. Christian Jimenez says, five years, congrats. Thank you. Do you all have a favorite Min Max video you rewatch or just super fond of? Mine include Janet's Jet Ski Journey from the Trek to Shrek Minneapolis Vogue. Yeah. Um, uh, the 2021 Holiday Special. The Are We Still Funny Kayla... <laughs> New Show Plus, of course. Can't believe you rewatched it. That's amazing. New Show Plus E3 2018, Ben Henson's Foot Fetish Awakening. I don't recall <laughs> that being a thing. Uh, Doc Lightning 2024 specifically. Thank you, Christian. Uh, yeah, is there any stuff that you go back to watch? Like Leo, you mentioned, I guess, the uh, Hitman splaining. For sure. I think a lot of things I've gone back to watch once, and I haven't yet gone back multiple times. But the first things I'll do multiple times are probably Trek to Shrek yeah. uh, at the 210s discussions. And Hitman's planning, and the probably the long form vlogs, the Summer Game Fest one, and the Day That Does with Joe one. Yeah, it's it's probably I don't know what it says about me, but I think the stuff that I go back to look at the most is like stuff with Ronnie because he really makes me laugh in a big way, like my yeah. friend Ronnie. And and so it's like we did a commentary for a DVD I had of E three two thousand four, <laughs> like that that really will make me laugh. And one that I, I go back and look at, it's an embarrassing amount is. We did the commentary tracks for the Lord of the Rings Extended Edition, mm -hmm. which I I feel like I let everybody down by not being as big of a Lord of the Rings fan as I thought I was watching. I was like, oh, these are long. I don't feel like I got anything to say. <laughs> but I made a highlight cut that's on our YouTube channel of just like the parts that made me laugh the most of our commentary. And I'll go back and watch that over and over again. And it, <laughs> it slays me. It just Because it turns out if you're talking with funny people for like nine and a half hours, if you cut that down to seven minutes, it's, it's really, really funny. And like Jeff Cork in particular just annihilates me in that. Yeah. Um, or like, yeah, there was... The Thanksgiving jokes I might have gone back to more than once yes. at this point. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, same here. That really. Are you guys ready, by the way, for the this, jokes coming up? This is the first Monday? year I prepared in advance, and I have like three and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have a lot. Not that you shouldn't try really hard, Jeff, um, but I've, I've, I've never written more than I have for this year. I'm very excited to wow. jump into it. Nice. None of them are good, but I just want to be very clear that I've written technically a lot for that. Uh, Leo, your early Min Max stuff where you made the sort of edited Hitman videos, yeah. I still think about there's the one joke. I don't remember exactly how you framed it, but you were talking about like it's like a Hitman. The Hitman is pretending to be a barber and you're like, in making you examine your own life and you're like and I struck the keyboard and you just have like <laughs> sort of a simulated like screen shake of you striking the keyboard just that one joke just like makes me laugh so hard Thank that you. was one that I Thank showed you. my daughter that I was like let's watch this funny video together and she really enjoyed it so wow. that's what I that's what I revisit oh, God. Thank you that's so good Jonas Schlotterbeck writes in that can't be a real name they say uh, in theme with the prize um, what is the greatest cartoon of all time number one oh, cartoon this one's tough I, yeah, I like this question, but I didn't really have a, a singular answer necessarily. We're talking about like TV shows, right? That's what I think I think when so. I think cartoon. Yeah, my I I I, th I think my answer is Dragon Ball Z. 
Really? Yeah. Somebody in the comments was like, it's obviously Dragon Ball Z. Because there's, there's stuff that I think is like better written and like there's like the, I beg ca- to differ. the Cowboy Bebops. <laughs> like rewatching Cowboy Bebop in the last couple of years, I was like, God, this is so good. And like yeah. there's, it's a lot of anime for me, um, just because I think anime is particularly good. Yeah, I, Full I Metal was, Alchemist Brotherhood. I was going like to question that. whether we're counting anime as yeah. cartoons. Yeah. I think we are. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's Dragon Ball a Z specifically, even if you want to like slice it apart but between Dragon Ball and Super and GT and over stuff like the that. Simpsons. <sighs> See, Ooh. Ooh. you know, honestly, I didn't really think of the Simpsons. The Simpsons has highs and <laughs> lows, like really rough lows. Mm-hmm. Dragon Ball Z, I feel like, doesn't have as many lows as the Simpsons. We're talking Kai. I mean, Kai is a recut of. Yeah, I mean, if, I mean, there's there's slow chunks. I mean, yeah. I, Dragon Ball Z is so important to me, but even the idea of going back and like that's that's a bit of a slog. Yeah, I mean, I seasons. started rewatching The Simpsons a couple of years ago. Like, it's like my doing dishes show. But I, I, you just fall off at a certain point. Yeah, it's like I don't want to keep watching this. This is bad. <laughs> you know. And that's why the answer is Bluey. Bluey, yeah. Bluey's, I, It's funny. I my daughter's too old for Bluey, but we have watched like a handful of episodes, and I'm like, this this is really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tra- Venture Venture Brothers for me. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, that's correct good. choice. Uh, Travis and Fargo. By the way, Travis, I appreciate your support. This is all about celebrating the community and keeping us around for five years. But Travis, I hear you out there writing your questions into every video game podcast out there. I listen. I notice, but I appreciate it. <laughs> so Travis writes and says, uh, "I've been watching that new Penguin show, and I think it's pretty awful." I don't, anyways, but I'm compelled <laughs> to keep watching. Have you all been watching any bad TV lately? Dragon Ball Z, Falk, <laughs> <Metal Alchemist Brothers. laughs> Um, Marie and I have been getting really into Vanderpump Rules. Wow, it's it's, reality, it's borders on right? good TV to be honest. Okay, it's it's like a specific type of bad TV of young people with stupid problems that they create for themselves, but it's like the most fascinating version of that. It's like the peak of that type of TV. And we're in season eight now where it's Whoa. like you've, it starts out with them having their problems at the restaurant they all work at and the politics of, you know, st- you stole my table or whatever. And they try to keep that going as long as possible. But now it's like, we're back a year after contract renegotiations and they're clearly just full-time celebrities. And their plots <laughs> are like, what do I do? fill my time with like how do i have a fulfilling <laughs> life when my whole job is to be on the show three months a year uh, it's fascinating to watch them all change with that in real time yeah i uh i big it like murder mysteries are very hot right now there's a lot of like murder mysteries. murders shows. in you guys yeah mm-hmm. and there was there was Probably one legalization there was one called death and other details that was on hulu recently and like the first episode was solid and it just became that thing where, like, my wife and I watched the whole thing, like, just out of some weird sense of obligation. But, like, the last four episodes of this, like, eight-episode series were like, this sucks. <laughs> like, <laughs> we hate this. I, and I think it was, we were just, like, hoping. It's like, I think maybe it'll come back around. Maybe there's some twist that'll explain everything. It's like, no, bad. <laughs> but we watched the whole damn thing. I don't know why. Oh, God. Uh, I, it wasn't TV shows, but I... I I spent two I wasted two nights watching Escape Plan and then Escape Plan 2 and there is there is an Escape Plan 3 um, but I fell asleep halfway through Escape Plan 2 and have to go back to it but it it, it, the first one was um, it's Sylvester Stallone little past his prime uh, gets sent to a, he he's he's an expert at breaking out of prisons yeah and he gets sent to a prison uh, but they but they won't let him out once he gets in because he's been he's been betrayed Scary. but he, he meets a he meets a guy on the inside guess what it's arnold schwarzenegger in yeah. in the first one so it so it was, it was actually kind of a fun movie I, I put it on as like a just i need some crap on in the background right uh, but then the second one had such a big and bad drop off now that it was like arnold's not in it because of course he's not going to do another one of those sylvester's in like the cyber prison where he's being forced <laughs> to fight people and the graph you know like the visual effects are terrible and it and and yet i still feel compelled to <laughs> to finish it for some reason i don't know i don't know what's wrong with me no one can tell hey, me. you can get a lot out of watching bad stuff i find you can chandler wrote in saying congrats on the five years what at min max has brought you the most joy oh wait no leo's on the podcast forget the question i have a demand let leo talk about streets of rogue too <laughs> <laughs> nice um, it's uh, just a demo right now. It's just three classes, but it's kind of a proof of concept. Um, and I like, I put four hours into the demo. I like it a lot. 
And this is the isometric immersive sim. You can basically do whatever you want in this game, and it rules. Right. And the first one was a little more linear. Move, Do a couple missions a level and move on. And I'm just kind of grappling in this demo of the new one, which is open world, how different that makes it. Having, I can do this mission and go, and it ends in me blowing up this building, and that building is going to stay blown up, or the tenants are going to be killed, and it's going to be unoccupied for a while, and then people are going to move in. Like those kinds of open world things of never moving on past the chaos you create, really. Like some of it gets cleaned up automatically, but it has these long term impacts. And it's, um, since you're staying with one character for longer, because you can die and keep going, I, you know, load a recent save, you can do uh, skill tree stuff. So it's less, I am the hacker, I can hack. It's more, I'm the soldier. I think this time I'll pick hacking from the skill tree and I can hack. I was a chef who could uh, mug people and extort businesses. Mm. And so I'd go to like rival restaurants and kind of have my rivalries with them or go hire a friendly chef and go like kill this island full of chickens so that I would get all this chicken meat that then I could then cook as a chef using my chef skills. Nice. So it's, it's, it's exciting how much you will be able to do with uh, skills on different character classes and kind of cross-pollinating like that and making really unique types of guys. But it's very early right now. It's very buggy and uh, not too much content just in the demo. But the demo is going to keep getting updated until the early access starts. So it's kind of like a soft start for early access already. But isn't, isn't early access coming out soon? It was Did supposed to come that? out a couple... Yesterday, but then like a week ago, oh, they said, okay. here's the demo, and it's delayed indefinitely until it's ready, mm, okay. which was a bummer. Gotcha. Miss Kane writes this, congratulations on the five years. Imagine a snapshot or a time capsule filled with all the things from today. Looking back in five years, what will be the weirdest thing about Midmax? That's good. I like this question. It's mm-hmm. a good trippy one. Do you kind of like, re- what, I don't know, like an item that we put in a time capsule? More, I think just snapshot of right now, five years from now, what will be weird. The screenshot of the uh, YouTube channel is the time capsule. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. right. I feel like uh, we might go, damn, we did a lot of stuff outside. <laughs> <laughs> we went to a lot of random attractions in Minneapolis. Was it maybe just this week because we had the record store and then the pumpkin patch? And the f- giant games giant chess, and yeah. every yeah. other new show plus that's ever happened. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where the out in public one wins. That's funny. Because I feel like I love that out in public stuff so much that I feel like five years from now, it's like, well, why were we still doing remote <laughs> episodes of Trivia Tower? Like, why are we was... still playing video games? <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with us? Sarah's Lemonade Stand. Who Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think I don't want it to happen. I, I love our crew currently. I do feel like five years from now, I'd be like, oh, I can't believe this person was still there. Or oh, I can't sure. believe this person hadn't joined yet. Like I think I think there's going to be some rotation, and I don't sure. know anything. I'm not teasing yeah. somebody dropping out or anything. There's going to but... be like a pre this person era, right? Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Pre this show era, something like that for sure. Mm. Yeah. It's. I, I mean, it's, it's wild to look back and be like, oh, I mean, Suriel and Anna added so much to this, and so when we're talking about the celebration of Inmate. Shouldn't leave them out. You know, uh, vinyl sure. sales are dropping. I hear. So maybe no. we'll be like, whoa, they have, why do they have vinyls all over the desk? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Jeff, I'm predicted five years from now. We'll be like, oh, yeah, remember that crazy studio that we were in back then? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Before back, the back even when, bigger studio? Back yeah. when Hanson had a house. Right, was right. Oh, what's going to happen? Streaming from the back of his van. <laughs> Destitute. <laughs> do you think Max will exist in five years? Yeah. Yeah? Hmm. So this, does anyone want to take that bet? This... <laughs> Do it's, you? It's, <laughs> it sounds so. like such a it, will. it sounds like such a long time until yeah. you realize that it has been five years yes, that we've right. been doing this. I think you're right that the cast could change significantly, but I, yeah, I don't. I, I have full confidence. Full confidence it'll be still be around five years. Yeah, yeah. Well, the biggest struggle would probably be if Patreon changes up in a big way, and that could really oh, sure. damage us. And within five years, I could see Patreon doing something wild. Yeah, yeah, pull, pulling a Unity. Then you, you, know? then you just go to Kohi or whatever that one is. In Cambria? <laughs> Never. Uh, there we go, Chandler. Uh, thank you to everybody who wrote in. Wonderful community questions. Uh, question of the week. <laughs> what are we giving the one about to? Streets of Rogue 2. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We got so, so off tangent on like so many of them. Yeah. I know. I kind of like... <laughs> 
I, I like thinking about the greatest cartoon show of all time. <laughs> okay, but I think I like it's the good. I like the Min Max ones. Those. I like yeah. I like reflecting. I like I liked whatever got us to talking about stressful money negotiation. I think that's interesting. Oh, yeah. Highs and lows. Yeah, I like yeah, the highs and lows. All right, yeah. aging poorly. Congratulations, you, you won the Gravity Falls vinyl. Thanks to I am a. Speaking bit. of great cartoon shows, fantastic show, Gravity Falls. There we go. Nice. That's exactly it. Um, okay, uh, now it is time for something called. Get a load of this. Do we finally get to hear the theme? No, we still have to pretend. Do I have anything? Uh, hey, get a load of this. Um, I forgot about this in person. Uh, the host of Comedy Bang Bang, Scott Ackerman, <clears throat> Kyle. Do you see that he's writing uh, Spider-Man comics now? Yeah, he won't shut up about it on Comedy Bang Bang. He's always like, let me write that down as a, a potential Wait, villain. really? Yeah, it's very funny. Oh, that's yeah. kind of sad that yeah. I haven't listened to that show in years but it was a very important show for me for a long time yeah and he was always such a big spider-man fan so yeah. not just seeing that it's like cool. oh wait he's writing astonishing spider-man like that's super cool yeah i think that is really cool i'm being i'm being rude but uh it is fun to hear him talk about it and i just remember because back when i was listening to company Bang, he kept referencing this thing that now is stuck in my head where he said there was a comic a spider-man cover once and it was spider-man marrying mary jane um except like green goblin was coming in or something and he had to fight him so it's the pastor at the front and he goes with this ring, I the web? <laughs> and he's like shooting the web in the middle of the sermon. I think about it all the time. Kind uh, bang bang, still great podcast. And okay. that's what Get you wanted your, for your wedding, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah, I shouted it, but the reference wasn't really landing. <laughs> The web shooter didn't go off. <laughs> uh, get a load of this. Yeah. Uh, Kyle has a Slack DM to himself that he just constantly <laughs> yeah. posts to, apparently. That's interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Keep interesting. All, you want one of these? All my get a no. load of this is that I saved? No. Uh, get a load of this. Uh, I talked about the crappy movies I've watched recently, mm. but there was a good one that I watched, uh, which was uh, Will and Harper that just released oh, yeah, yeah, on right. Netflix yeah. not too long ago. Um, that was... Surprisingly touching, uh, a little depressing, but it's basically about Will Ferrell and his lifelong friendship um, with a former writer on Saturday Night Live and and a writer on a lot of his movies that uh, transitioned when she turned sixty and is Whoa. and and she talks about how like she used to love going to a lot of small towns and dive bars kind of all over the country and that and and she realized after she transitioned that that might be dangerous for her. Right. And so and so that was kind of the genesis of Will Ferrell realizing like, hey, we should go on a road trip together. I can go with you to these places. We can kind of figure out what our new friendship and relationship is, you know, going to be. And and uh, and they, you know, chronicled the entire thing as it could have been a new show plus option, really, when you <laughs> oh, think about it. Um, but uh, it's new it's really touching and everyone, everyone uh, should take a look at it and watch it. Yeah. It's on Netflix. That's right. Hey, get a load of this from my Slack DM to myself. Nice. Where I cool. just send myself random stuff that I can suddenly remember. Oh, gosh, we got to do get a load of this even in person. Get to it! Uh, there's this thing in Japan called the Competitive Daydreamers Competition. or the, It's called the 2024 Space Out Competition, where people competitively daydream. And uh, <laughs> to, to do this, the heart rates are checked. Uh, and anyone who laughs, talks, or dozes off is eliminated during the 90-minute competition. <laughs> so it's like a competition where you have to just sit and sort of stare out in the distance for 90 minutes and just not react That's at excellent. all. Excellent. <laughs> Which is uh, very funny. weird. Jeff them calls them reaction streams. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. I love you. Get a lot of this. You can actually be nice to your friends. <laughs> <laughs> um... Get a load of this. Anybody who matters to you, if they were polled and said, do you deserve to be happy? They'd say yes. So you should try and be happy. And there's a link to that in the description. <laughs> yeah, that in the description. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Leo. Love you, Leo. Uh, hey, get, get a load guys. of this. Uh, Spoop a spy in the Discord shared uh, this link. Immediately, it's like, oh my God. Uh, apparently, a Redditor named Seal Couch made this. Have you seen this? Leo Vader, no. I'll show you a picture of it. They oh. made the actual computer from UFO 50. Nice. And so it boots up directly to UFO 50. And they made the, yeah, just a replica of the hardware that's in the game. What would be better than that? That's so cool, including the controller? Yeah, everything wow. from the image. That's cool. So there's a link below if you want to check out all of this fun stuff. But let's see. 
We got some stuff here at MinMax. We got, uh, yeah, new show plus uh, on YouTube. There's technically two, because there's that new show, Overflow, where it's, yeah, Matt Helgeson going vinyl shopping with Giant Bombs, Dan Reichert, and Leo Vader. Now I can finally watch the whole thing, but, oh, it seems perfect. Like, that's where I thought MinMax was going to be. Just, like, that yeah. type of stuff forever. Um, but, let's see, Pumpkin Patch, that was a wild adventure. We drove down to Empire, Minnesota, and... They were very sweet at Crazy Legs Pumpkin Farm. Go support Which them. Which was closed. It was closed, but uh, I got a tour in a 4 by 4 from the farmer, and he opened it up just for us. And so we have a Venmo page in that video if you want to share him, share him some thanks. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was, it was awesome. We got lost in a corn maze. He showed off his pumpkin cannon where it was huge, and we expected it to be awesome, and it was jaw-dropping <laughs> how intense this pumpkin cannon was. It was crazy. Yeah. It's so cool. Um, Yeah, both of those recent ones we did just pre-recorded. Yes. So they're a lot better quality and like, you know, the mics we use are great. It, they kind of sound like a podcast if you just put them on and listen to them. So we're checking out if you are put off by the quality of some of our like out in public but streamed back to home base yep. type of shows. That's right. Thanks to Leo for editing those. Um, and then we have bonus pod. Uh, Haley McLean's uh, companion podcast in the $5 feed. If you're a $5 supporter on Patreon, you can unlock bonus pod each and every week. It is excellent. It, like, I listened to this week's show. It's like, God, it's, it's sometimes better than the main podcast. <laughs> and like this week was such a good one where it was like Jacob Geller and Charles Hart and Jill Grote from the Indian former. Uh, and they're all just unpacking highlights from the Xbox partner preview. Just joking around. A lot of good remedy talk in there. We'll be talking about the Lakehouse DLC, by the way, on next week's episode of the podcast. Um, but then also, uh, Charles Hart talking about his time playing, uh, yeah, Beastie Ball, like I mentioned before, which is a game I'm very curious about. I want to jump into. And if you enjoyed this glimpse into MinMax history, um, if you unlock that bonus pod feed, you also get access to the raw recordings of our first meetings about MinMax. And so you can just search for it in that feed. It's called The Actual Meetings That Formed MinMax. Lord Sturden says it well at the Backstage Pass here, by the way. He says, this is the companion podcast <laughs> <laughs> to Bonus Pod. That's very true. Uh, but hey, that is it for this episode of the MinMax Show. Huge thank you to everybody who has kept this thing afloat and growing over the past five years. Like, I don't... I don't take that for granted. It's it's easy to come out of the gate and be like, you, Game Informer guys are over here now. Uh, but the fact that you all have continued to spread the word, to support us on Patreon has let us grow and hopefully we're not letting you down with that growth. Like the the sweetest thing that I see from the community is, I forget where it was, Leo. I think I shared it with you. Of like somebody in the community called us uh, a quote, yes and outlet in terms of like <laughs> the discussions we have amongst ourselves but then also with the community. It does feel like Hopefully you can feel that communication and bouncing off ideas and fueling each other in a hopefully healthy way. You know, it feels yeah. like since the start of Min Max, it's been like, remember in Last Crusade when he's walking across the Jehovah steps and he has to spell it correctly? Jehovah starts with an I. Um, I think that's what he says. But it's, it's just that. It's like slowly <laughs> stepping as you're trying to build this outlet of being like this. Okay. Solid ground. This. Okay. Little rickety. Okay. Lesson learned. Okay. This. Okay. Nope. There's no audience over there. And so hopefully you feel like this is, yeah, partly your outlet as well as yeah. we're all building it up together because we couldn't have done this without the community first and foremost financially, <laughs> but then also uh, just in terms of giving us feedback, helping to steer this ship, making sure that, you know, we stay on the rails uh, and we, we appreciate it. I mean, the community has shaped this stuff so much. I mean, think of like all the votes for new show plus alone that has kind of made min max defining content. And it's all because of people that $10 tier are voting for that. Like that's, that's such a wild thing. So, And I, I think you do a good job of like sourcing that uh, feedback and asking for it. And But people also, please submit it whenever, you know, like positive or negative reinforcement about what you want us to be doing. And, and, and that suggestions channel in the Discord, I feel like compared to other places, we do a pretty high percentage of those suggestions. Like yeah. straight up new show plus ideas and names for things. Oh, Sun's oh rising. we got a perk in the studio. The <laughs> light brightens a little too brightly. Uh, but yeah, that's true. And if I don't respond to your suggestion in the channel, don't take that as a big of offense. Because everything is everything makes me think. I'm like, hmm, do I think that's a good idea? Some are like obvious slam dunks. And some are and, like, oh, I don't and know. And sometimes yeah. you're like, that's a good idea. But then you don't say it because you haven't learned your lesson that's yet. That's right. Come I'm on. teaching myself this whole thing. But no, we can't thank y'all enough. Thank you for being here in person. I mean, it goes without saying, but I should probably say it that 
Yes, we're very happy to have the studio. Don't expect every new episode of the Midmax Show to be in the studio. We still love the remote team and stuff, but I'd love to do, you know, on a semi-regular basis, get in here. But for sure, we're doing our charity stream, Big Give yes. to the Max stream. That's going to be happening Saturday, November 23rd. That's going to be the studio, and we have a couple folks flying in for that, so stay tuned for that. That'll be a fun time. We yes. have auction prizes and all that stuff. We'll be communicating soon for all that. There might be another surprise in there as well around that window, so stay tuned, everybody. Mm. But yeah, a huge thank you to everybody for making this whole thing possible uh you know starting it out five years ago it felt like it felt like we were trying something it felt like maybe this and it's been a struggle at times it's it's the greatest blessing to have it be to have like a little project like this in your life you know like i, I am so excited about max over the last five years and i i am very enthusiastic for it moving forward because it just feels like a fun little project of like trying to make this thing. Can I make this? Can we steer it this way? Is this possible? Is this actually going to work? And at the five year mark, it is a nice feeling. It's like, oh, we we made a thing. Like, you mm. know, struggle over, you know? Like <laughs> trial balloon is off. Like we have made an outlet um, and it's a huge thanks to everyone in the community who has made that all possible. All right, that's it. Anybody got any wise words to bow us out? Uh, what Leo said during Get a Little of This. Oh, mm. yeah. Smart. Just pretend I'm saying them now. Great. Nice. Oh, you're so smart. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's actually that's, a cool thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I know. Uh, Jeff, did I give you too much crap on this episode? No. Okay. Good what about me. Do you I, like I, being... I think you, I think you worry a lot about what I think. <laughs> Way more than you need to. Don't worry about it. Okay. Sweet. I'll tell you. I'll tell you if I have problems. You know that. All right. That's sweet. All right. Leo, anything you want to say? Uh, thanks so much, everybody. What a what a gift this thing is. I'm so, like, yeah, talking about <clears throat> almost quitting. It's like, I'm so glad I didn't. And I have this as part of my life now. It brings me so much joy. Even parts I didn't expect. The producer stuff is giving me more than I expected. It's like, yeah, just love this community. So such a cool thing to be a part of. Yeah. yeah. And, and we should say that uh, we are very appreciative of everything that you do, Hanson. Oh, I, I, know, I know you that's hate true. that part, but like I said earlier, like there, there are probably multiple times during every week where I think, Jesus, I'm so glad I don't have to think about this and stress yeah. about all the things, all the, all the little, you know, details that you have to do behind the scenes to keep this whole thing operating. Well, hey, I appreciate it. All right, that's it for this episode. We'll be back next week. Thanks so much, everybody. Be good, have fun, let's go. I found the original note, by the way, in that oh. doc that says one of the ideas for messaging is be good, have fun, let's go. <laughs> is this a thing? Mm -hmm.